Cuomo has come out in an official policy statement and said that cyber attacks directed by Russia against any Western infrastructure, any computer systems will be seen as an act of war and that NATO may respond with military force. That is really an unprecedented statement. We'll be looking at that today. Speaking of living on the edge, Breitbart is now reporting on something that we began to expose five years ago when the Syrian conflict was started by NATO and the Clintonistas along with the Obama crew. Obama and men aided group that became ISIS to control area where ISIS formed its caliphate. And the point is, is that there are now more government memos and Pentagon reports coming out confirming everything the Pentagon told us five years ago. And of course, we didn't need the Pentagon to tell us. We were already exposing it. The Pentagon just confirmed that to Infowars.com. They also told Cy Hirsch that. They also told many others that who did not run with the story at the first because they were too afraid to. And I'm not criticizing those people. It's just everyone needs to understand, I don't get up here and make things up. Sometimes I'm satirical. Sometimes we you know, have a little bit of fun, but we're very clear and demark with demarcation when we're being silly versus when we're being serious. And more and more, uh, I'm not silly, even though that's something that takes the edge off and gallows humor is certainly needed. More and more, we are about 98 uh, percent very serious around here these days because uh, the time is getting late as Jimi Hendrix would say, or, or I guess as Bob Dylan would say, when he wrote All Along a Watchtower. Boy, I tell you, this is going to be a broadcast today. I had Dr. Tony Bark coming on, an amazing medical doctor exposing the dangers of vaccines, but with all the terror heating up and what's happening in the economy, I'm offering to move her into the fourth hour with Rob Dew because he loves to talk about vaccines. So do I, but he really is into that even more than I am. Such a central issue. Uh, or she can come on with us next week. But we've got Jakari Jackson coming on at the bottom of the next hour. He got some really eye-opening, just some of the most amazing of a giant system, uh, constellation uh, of amazing footage that our crew have gotten in the last year at Trump rallies. Uh, he got some really amazing footage that we're going to be uh, going over uh, today. We're going to be playing some of those clips. He's been on the road covering anti-Trump events the last three days. Uh, several of our reporters, uh, as we speak, are in uh, a car driving to Dallas to cover the Trump event tonight uh, that uh, is 7 o'clock. There are reportedly socialist and Democrats and battleground Texas groups, uh, that's an illegal alien promoting group basically, that are saying they are giving you know thousands of people free bus rides from all of the state to conflagrate uh, up in Big D. And that kicks off tonight at 7. We'll have coverage of that on the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. So definitely stay with Infowars.com for all of that today. Uh, we also have um, Citizens for Trump, the head of that organization, on highly recommended by uh, Roger Stone and the whole Trump operation separately. They have been basically denied permits for myself and Roger Stone and others uh, to hold uh, free speech rallies in Cleveland. And so the ACLU has asked myself and others to become co-signatories to a lawsuit uh, demanding access to the First Amendment there in Cleveland. And we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be uh, a plaintiff uh, to that. And I'm going to demonstrate. So that's just the end of it. Uh, and the communists, of course, will be running around attacking police and everything. It'll be coddled and protected by the police because it's a Democrat-run city. And I'm sure we'll, we'll be uh, excoriated for being horrible and evil and you know, just peacefully engaging in the First Amendment, but it's 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 going to happen. So that's that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, Black Lives Matter can organize its you know latest move to shoot cops in the back of the head and be given all the permits they could ever want. Of course, they just don't even get permits that are left alone because it's all this George Soros funded garbage. The same people that fund ISIS and that fund the Nazis in Ukraine and every other evil organization are just trying to overthrow this country and bully us into submission. And I don't know how all this is going to end, but I know this. I'm not backing down. I'm not giving in. I'm not giving up, especially when we're starting to turn the tide against this slime. Big transmission, huge news across the board. Straight ahead. They're coming after our guns. Big time. Eight, Matt Drudge came out yesterday you. and told the head of Homeland Security, if you want us to turn our guns in, you say that's a matter of Homeland Security, turn your guns in. There's a gun and ammunition just inside the doorway. Use it only in emergency. 
That's what it comes down to. In fact, the song continues on. Guns aren't going to save us in the final equation, but if they do get the guns, that's the final symbol of slavery. It's one of the final pieces in making us domesticated slaves with almost no chance of ever turning things around. And that's why tyrants have hunger, an instinct to disarm us. But it will be free speech and ideas and intellectual freedom that will lead the vanguard of the new renaissance. And if the enemy then wants to offensively attack us, it will be guns and weapons in the physical war that will complete the circle and deliver us back into the good graces of liberty. And that's why today I thought I would just display this flat black judge. I've been buying judges since Taurus came out with them 20 years ago. And I think I've, I've probably got four or five of these. This is the, this is the self-defense weapon I tend to have around the house. Uh, quick access, uh, but that way you don't shoot through walls. Uh, that way you don't uh, kill your neighbors. And you don't have to be as good a shot if you're half asleep or startled. The safest thing in your house is about a number seven. Here at the office, so I may need a little bit more distance on somebody. I've got, what is it, triple lot buck, four, 44 caliber pellets in each shotgun cartridge. And, and, and Taurus isn't a sponsor, though they should be, because for me, this is just a really great firearm. This is one, two, two, five, zero, zero, zero buck Remington ultimate home defense. And I've tested these out on wet phone books. And I've also tested these out on small game. And I have found this to be the best round. They've got a lot of other supposedly fancier ones that have different odd shapes and things or shoot darts out. That's all just a gimmick. You want to go with good old fashioned buckshot because its velocity is a lot higher. Unless you get in your, in your house, then you want to go like a number seven, seven and a half, but up close, it'll kill somebody dead in a hammer. And this is what it's all about. That way you don't shoot at somebody. It goes through them and then kills somebody on the other side. It just dissipates its force on the target, and then you're done. And, of course, with a shotgun cartridge, it dissipates not just because of there being more pellets, but also because there's a shorter, shorter barrel, but they don't weigh as much, and so they dissipate and lose force, and you really aren't lethal at past maybe 100 yards with triple-lot buckshot. With the number seven and a half bird shot, you're not really lethal anywhere past 20, 30, 40 feet. But up close, somebody's breaking in your house, shoot somebody 10 feet away, it's going to go almost through them and dissipate all its force inside their body, and then you are alive and they are dead. Imagine if the security guard licensed to carry hadn't turned and run in Orlando. Imagine if someone would have fired back. Imagine what would have happened. It doesn't matter if the person's wearing a bulletproof vest. You shoot at somebody with a shotgun, handgun, or shotgun rifle style. You aim towards their head. You're going to end up hitting them with some pellets, and they're not going to be in a position to continue to kill people. And that's the whole point of defending yourself. You shoot somebody with a 7 millimeter mag, let's say, in that place. It's going to go through the body armor, through them, and out the back and hit somebody else. But again, I'm not even Mr. Firearms Expert. But compared to these disarmed slaves, I'm a completely different animal, completely different creature. And so, again, I would just recommend that everyone go out and get a firearm. There is also a video that Tim Kennedy talked about yesterday right at the end of the interview I did with him. And I'm going to ask one of our great editors, Darren McBreen or whoever can do it, to real fast grab the last five minutes of the Tim Kennedy interview. And he brought up uh, one of these BuzzFeed videos they're pushing. The left is showing a leftist shooting a M4 or an AR-15 that basically has no kick. A five-year-old could shoot these all day. Now, if you held it totally listlessly with no force, 
it might jerk a little bit into your shoulder. But they sell this perception that firearms are just these devastatingly, you know, dangerous, explosive things uh, that no one can control. But somebody's not scared of a nail gun or scared of a chainsaw or scared of something else that on average you're going to get injured with a lot more often a lawnmower. It's a big spinning sling blade, Kaiser blade. I mean, super deadly. Chop your foot right off. Chop your toes right off. Happens all the time. It doesn't even make the news. But it's just an accident. Firearms are built for safety. They fire a projectile out the front where you're aiming them. If you just learn basic safety and get past the mystic awe and fear around it, we can win this culture war, but we've got to take trendies out, and we've got to get them to be able to fire firearms and learn how to use them responsibly. That's why they're putting out all these videos, I've noticed, where people fire two two threes, people fire five six six, however you you denominate it, and it shows them being knocked over and falling down. That is being done like the old police academy movies, where the little old lady shoots the three fifty seven magnum and it blows her back through the wall. I mean, I was firing three fifty seven magnums when I was six years old. The secret is you just hold it with a little bit of force and control in your hand, and it just kicks back with the force of a puppy pushing its paw into you. I mean, it's just nothing. Now, I will say I've gone out and shot 100 rounds of 50 cal before and not really paid attention and just done it like I'm relaxed. And then it, you know, kind of knocked my back out of play. But as long as you tense up when you're firing it, it's not a problem. But that's, that's different when you're holding some, you know, 50-pound Barrett uh, naval, you know, version uh, or army version, and you're sitting there, you know, uh, firing it over and over again. Yes, then then you can have some issues. Uh, but it's just a lot of folks. I tell them I think the judge is a great firearm because it's a legal shotgun cartridge in a handgun, the equivalent of a sawed-off shotgun, and it's just a lot of power and it's just versatile on so many fronts and doesn't kill people on the other side of the wall unless you're shooting triple out buck or slugs, and there's almost no kick from this. I mean, my children at age seven or eight have you know gone out and fired these, even with slugs out in the country, and you just teach them to sit there and hold it with some force, have control, keep their finger off the trigger until they're ready, cock the firearm, aim at the target, pull the trigger. And then forever, they are free of the anti-gun brainwashing cult. Now, I've already digressed uh, into that, but I'm going to obviously get into the news on that front. They're coming for the Second Amendment. They want executive orders to ban semi-autos, to ban their manufacture, to ban their sale. Obama actually said it, as you know, two days ago and again yesterday. We spent most of the first hour yesterday playing that clip going over it. Now, Jay Johnson came out and said that um, it's Homeland Security's job and that for Homeland Security and public safety, we must restrict firearms. And he said, because of growing American terrorism, uh, the same quotes we heard out of Obama. They also want people to be put on a no-gun buy list, just like you're on a no-fly list. When they sit there and say, if you're on a no-fly list, we want you on the no-gun buy list, it's the same thing. No one knows how you're put on it. You can't get off of it. We had Tim Kennedy, top anti-terrorism expert, 15-year special forces, a lot of that in domestic anti-terrorism operations, I'll just stop right there, but that's known. Agreeing with me that it destroys due process, it's horrible, it's out of control. Johnson's pushing that too. And Drudge came out with the tweets. Drudge to DHS secretary, give up your guns first. The reason it's important when Drudge came here last year, and he said to Obama, give up your guns first. That became a meme and, and then you saw other people like Ted Nugent pick it up. You saw Donald Trump pick it up. And, and now the general public's picked it up because that's an idea that's unstoppable. Michael Moore has bodyguards. Hillary Clinton has bodyguards. Steven Spielberg has armed bodyguards. They've all got former special forces commandos. They might be American, but most of those are conservative, so they're not. They're either Israeli or French. And, I mean, I've been to a lot of these people's houses. That's who's there usually at least two of them, and they've got armed commandos protecting them.
And most of the commandos Hollywood have, I guess, are foreign. Not even so much because they're not libertarian or conservative, because usually they're you know they're listeners when I talk to them, even if they're French or Israeli or German or whatever. A lot of them are Israeli. I guess that's kind of you know cool in Hollywood. But Hollywood hires foreign commandos because they don't like American soldiers. Is really what it comes down to. That's how anti-America the whole mindset is. Is just just oh, we just don't have a lot of. I mean, former American special forces here just because they just don't, quote, service Hollywood. But that's a side issue. Once everybody realizes that they've all got bodyguards, a lot of them at taxpayer expense, it's game over. They live in a total gun culture themselves, but just don't want us to be part of it because they want a bunch of domesticated slaves that they can totally control. It's that simple. So Rolling Stone came out yesterday with, it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. Just take the guns. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in to quote Diane Feinstein. Well, now, this is up on Infowars.com, UCLA professor, Congress should secretly suspend Second Amendment. Ah, and that's how they do it. Just put you on a no-gun buy list. So that's just some of what's going on. But we have this being called for everywhere. There's the headline for TV viewers. Why it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. It needs to be repealed because it's outdated, a threat to liberty, and a suicide pack. Even though overall crime using guns is down upwards of 60% since 1992, FBI unified crime statistics, and mass shootings are flat. Everyone thinks that alligator attacks are over the top, and everyone now in Florida and all over is scared to swim. One child's been eaten. They should have killed the alligator two weeks ago when it came running out of the bushes and tried to eat another little kid. Disney World was politically correct and didn't, so the gator half-chowed the poor little toddler. Cute little photos. But the point is, still, imagine how scary that is, a big lizard, a big amphibious lizard eating your child. See, that's sensational. Just like it's sensational that... 49 people got killed in Orlando, and it is terrible, and, and it is happening, and it's a lot more dangerous than all the shark attacks in the world in the last seven, eight years. On average, it's about maybe 12, 13 shark attack deaths a year worldwide. There, there might have been 50 gay people beaten to death in the last 20, 30 years, uh, you know, being mugged because of their sexual preference. 49 died. And you don't hear a word about Islam. So, so it's all how they present things. And they're presenting it right now that it's the fault of the Second Amendment and Americans' rights. And I know you as an audience get this better than I do, but that's why I'm hammering Islam so hard. Because we can't just give it a pass and just hope the jihadis stop killing us. That's bad enough. But they're going to go find liberal victim disarmament zones where they feel safe to cowardly kill as many people as they can. They're not going to hit harder targets, patriot targets. Look how it went for them at a conservative event in Dallas, dead before they could even get out of their cars. Dead within seconds of starting to fire shots. Dead, dead, dead. No, we're not just talking about hundreds getting killed every year by Islamists now here in the United States and thousands and thousands uh, per country in the Middle East every month, hundreds of thousands every year, and hundreds and hundreds in Europe. No, no, no. We're talking about them killing our right of free speech and killing our Second Amendment, the right to self-defense, and then killing our Fourth Amendment, saying none of us have any rights to privacy because they've got to protect us from the very jihadis the traitor government brought in. Jack Spratt could eat no fat, his wife could eat no lean. Between the two, they lick the platter clean. That's why I say the jihadis are the magic, magic, magic skeleton key of the New World Order. The West brings them in. They get to make us be politically correct and submit to them. The terrorists attack. They get to take more of our rights. They get to have civil emergencies restricting our freedoms in the name of countering the threat they brought in. All because of the death of logic. Merkel is to blame. Hollande is to blame. Hillary Clinton is to blame. Barack Obama is to blame. And the Republican leadership going along with the open borders is to blame. 
I am not to blame when I try to get on an airplane and they want to, after I go through the scanners and everything, want to touch my genitals. That's why I went with the naked body scanners, because I know they saved the images. That was confirmed years after we documented it. But on top of that, it's all fake. So the former head of Homeland Security, Chertoff, makes money. His company's made billions. He's made more than $30 million last time I checked. And then when Saudi Arabians come through, they don't even put them through the machines because it's against their religion. It's a joke. And then even if you go through the scanner, a lot of times they want you to go over and get groped some more. And, oh, let's check your bag to see if there's explosives. When they already ran my ID and put me through a database and no, I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in like three years. They know full well. They've got an entire digital dossier on me. Doesn't matter though. I've got to be trained. My children have to be trained how to be prisoners as the border stays wide open. So I'm going to talk more about this attack on the Second Amendment and then tie it together. Oh, government documents released. Obama administration aided group that became ISIS to control area where ISIS formed the caliphate. We're going to get into NATO says it might now have grounds to attack Russia. Oh, yes, this is official. This is really big. We'll look at a bunch of communist and socialist utopias that are currently collapsing into flames. We're on the march. More. So they told us they were never coming after our guns. And then they brought in a bunch of incompatible people from the Middle East that have been killing each other for over a thousand years. And then they launched a worldwide Saudi Arabian and Western backed Islamic offensive of terrorist attacks, sex slavery, and radicalization. And they ship Stinger missiles and anti-tank missiles to them by the thousands and gave them billions of dollars and then had the nerve to protect these radical networks, these radical mosques who openly get on TV and say to their practitioners, to their flock of weasels, go out and kill gays and kill single women having sex out of wedlock. And no one goes to jail, no one gets investigated, and the FBI is ordered to stand down. I'm living in the twilight zone, and let me tell you something. If you think this screw job you're living under is bad, yet get ready. Because they have brought people in from the most backward third world nuthouse countries. Where the people are so backstabbing and so psychotic, they can't even get their act together to have running water. Countries where they wipe their butts with their hand. Yes, that's why a Muslim will shake your hand with one hand, not the other. I'm not trying to be gross here. I'm just telling you, w w w these aren't industrialized Muslim nations they're bringing these people in from. They are bringing them in from Hillbilly Central. And they are here and they are flipping out when they walk into a movie theater and they've got men and women in the same bathroom. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to go nuts. They're going to go out to their car. They're going to get a knife. They're going to come in and start stabbing people. Or they're going to flip out and go get a gun and shoot people. And then I'll be blamed, you'll be blamed by the very leftist media combine that knows exactly what they're doing. But I'm going to stop right there because I want to get into some of this other news here in a moment. Briefly, I want all the listeners and viewers to know that I want to thank you for your support, spreading the word, sending out the videos, the articles. You're the reason that InfoWars is just really, when it comes to actually reaching people, exploding. But it's a paradox. There's a global depression in most areas. Our economy is really in a depression, uh, though it's not evenly distributed, obviously. And the mainstream media does everything it can to cover that up. But when you do buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com, all really great products, the things that everybody needs, water filtration systems, non-GMO heirloom seeds, uh, nutraceuticals, Books, films, uh, libertarian, patriot, Americana apparel that promotes a message of freedom and resistance to tyranny. It's all there. When you purchase products there, it makes what we do here completely and totally possible. So Tim Kennedy has joined InfoWars to start promoting uh, a weekly series on preparedness, on combat training, on HUMET, on uh, identifying... Uh, criminal operatives, jihadi operatives, you name it, in your area. It's great to have 
the top army soldier and he's recognized as like the top army soldier uh in every every score fighting combat shooting uh analysis photography I mean, it just goes on and on it's great to have him advising and working with infowars now and uh, he is a big supporter of the products brain force secret 12 super metal vitality the three products He's got the anti-doping agency uh, that oversees the UFC to approve him to take these. And he's just blown away by him. I mean, he kind of poo-poos a lot of other supplements. Uh, Super Mill Vitality really blew him away. He quite frankly said libido was the strongest thing. He's already right up there at, at you know, the top one-tenth of one percent. But he said he did feel gains of strength, of recovery. He said unlike any other workout enhancement um, herbal product out there because we really did set out to make cold pressed concentrated it's an oil basically the most pure unadulterated unpasteurized it hasn't been heated that's what's so important product it's like wine but it's 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 an it's, it's really a blend of essential oils and herbs super male vitality super female vitality i mean it, it, it's got almost five star reviews thousands of reviews it, it's like a 4.8 third-party sites. It's so powerful. It's 15% off the Tim Kennedy special on Super Mel Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12. You can get them all three together or get them separately. 15% off. Again, but it's also 15% off on those individually. Uh, you can also get free shipping on orders of $50 or more. And when you sign up for auto ship, an additional 10% off. Or if you want to support the broadcast, you know, don't sign up for that and Help us get more money in here to get more reporters, more crew, more people. And we got Joe Biggs. We've got Tim Kennedy on the on the military anti-terrorism front. We've got all these other great reporters who have expertise in, 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 in different areas. Uh, we got four or five more slots uh, in the reporting area to fill. We need more camera people. We need more editors. We need more writers. I'm, I'm maxed out, though, financially. Uh, but every time I expand, we end up getting the support we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend our reserves, put everything all in, going through this election into next year. And if we have to downsize next year, we will. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to support us. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. InfoWarsLife.com uh, is the nutraceuticals. As part of our partnership with Special Forces Operator and UFC fighter Tim Kennedy, we're giving you 15% off the top InfoWars Life formulas used by Tim Kennedy. You have 50% off of Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12. That's Methyl Cabalum and Vitamin B12. And InfoWarsLife.com right now for a limited time. These are the products that Tim Kennedy uses in his special forces and UFC training that help him go to the next level. And he said it took him to the next level, which he said wasn't a huge next level, but very noticeable and real after working out six hours a day. And the guy is a freak, by the way. I mean, that's, that's well known. Uh, all three products have hundreds of five-star reviews and contain the known herbs that help boost the body naturally. Now is the time to stock up and get our top products 15% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Visit InfoWarsLife.com and get on the Tim Kennedy InfoWars Life routine with Supermodel Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And then lastly, all Alexa Pure water filtration gravity-fed systems are 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. All the other systems are 10% off with promo code WATER, but, but Alexa Pure is just 20% off, period. Uh, we also have their great uh, Alexa Pure Breeze, Air Purifier System, and so much more at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, I'm done done plugging, except for this fact. <sighs> Continue to spread the word about the local AM and FM stations you're on. Don't take that for granted that we're in a serious info war, and the globalists are doing everything they can to try to block this information. Spread the word, become a sponsor, let the sponsors know why you're supporting, whether a dry cleaners or a, or a car dealership uh, or whoever it is, or become a sponsor. Or start your own show, or send them $100, or put the frequency of the station on the side of your business, or the side of your barn, or put an ad in the paper for the local station and tell them I'm doing this because you're carrying the Alex Jones show. And chances are, if they're carrying this broadcast, they're carrying other good broadcasts. Uh, man, I tell you, we're all in in this fight. I know a lot of you have done a lot of great things. There's no way for me to thank you all. I read your letters. I see your emails. I'm working. I'll be honest, I only work like 10, 12 hours a day now that I'm 40-something and I got three children and a lot of, because I physically work 18 hours a day sometimes, but then it, it degrades my other work. I, I just work intensely and more focused now. Uh, but I did work 18 hours a day for many years and it, it, you saw it into my body. 
Uh, and so I, I just need to have the long run here. So I've, I've cut back to a huge media load, probably one of the biggest media loads anybody has out there, but not the uh, joke level one where I used to do six hours a day on radio and a TV show. Uh, and uh, basically even sometimes get in the shipping department and package packages myself. Uh, I mean, I started out doing that 20 years ago, making my first film, and I would sit there in my apartment putting the VHS tapes in the package and mailing them out. But that's how I built from that base, totally zero, all the way up to what we're here at now. I have responsibility to go for broke, be, be all in right now, to, 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 to hit the globalist with broadside after broadside, forget the maneuvers and go straight at them. I'm going straight at them, and I'm counting on providence. And it's been coming through, so thank you for your prayers as well. I'm praying for you. Okay, I got a bunch of Donald Trump clips that I've got to get to that are very powerful. But first, I want to play this incredible statement here. CIA director tells Congress he's focused on diversity after Pulse Club massacre. So the answer is run around and have feel-good stuff about gay, 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 and everything's wonderful, you know, when you're part of a team. And let's, let's, let's just propagandize everyone about how we should be nice to gay people. And somehow radical Islamic extremist whose father gets on the YouTube every week and says, you know, kill the gays. And the guy's imam says, kill the gays. The issue isn't, hey, we have people calling for murder. The issue is, oh, you're the cause celeb. That's like when breast cancer goes up almost 3,000% in the United States and every other Western country because glyphosate grows it, amongst other things. I mean, it admittedly grows it like miracle grow for tumors, you know, Roundup. It's in the water table. You might want to filter your water, or you might want to die of breast cancer. I don't know. It's your choice. Uh, it's hit my family. Hit every, I mean, I got daughters. It just—it really makes me angry. And it's just—it's it, just an admitted fact, by the way. Just you know, like Miracle Grow grows plants. Well, glyphosate grows big, giant uh, estrogen-based tumors. It's, it looks like estrogen in the body. A very funky form of it. And it tells weeds to die, folks. That's not too good for you. I know they told you you could drink it. It was pure bull. The lobbyist that started that 20 years ago was asked that on uh, Canadian TV, and he said, "Of course, I'm not going to drink that. I'm not crazy." <laughs> I just say that to the to the idiots, but uh, I told you it'll all be cause celeb. You say, what's breast cancer have to do with gays being killed? They don't ever ask why is it exploding and is everybody getting it, and even twelve year olds getting it. They they just say let's find a cure, and then oh you know it's Pink Day at the restaurant. You want to pay extra ten dollars for your food? No, I don't. Oh, you don't care about breast cancer? No, I I know what's causing a lot of it. And I'm trying to warn people, I'm really angry about it. And as a man, I don't like being hit with it and prostate cancer going up. And I don't like the fact that men have to basically do all this stuff to block estrogen or we get female breast. I don't like the fact that we're being messed with. I want to stop the source of it. Oh, but it's all, let's have a run for breast cancer. Let's all wear pink. Let's all wear pink ribbons. Let's all remember our grandma that died. No, no, I want somebody else's grandma to not die. I had one grandmother die of cancer. My other grandmother has breast cancer. She's had it for four years. She's refusing to be operated on. I get it. She's 91 years old. The point is that I want to stop it. I want to cut it back. I want to remove it. It's like they back in the 50s, they had tranquilizers for women that would cause the babies to have short arms and legs. Remember that? They took it off the market. Imagine nowadays, they if it came on the market today, what was the name of that famous tranquilizer? If it came on the market today, they would just have runs and jogs and galas and fundraisers and events to try to figure out why, why uh, the cure for people not having short arms and legs and giant heads and deformities. Instead, you just stop giving people the tranquilizer. But they're not taking the glyphosate out. No, 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 sir. And they're not going to stop the Islamics going around and killing the homosexuals. They're going to pistol whip you politically and tell you how you somehow weren't nice and you weren't tolerant and how you've got to go out and pledge your support to the Democratic Party. Thalidomide. Yeah, look up thalidomide. Sold under the brand name Imuaprin, among others. And then it went on to that cause massive birth defects. And in about five years, they figured it out and stopped it. Hundreds of thousands of birth defects. Worldwide, it was, what, 7,000 in the United States. But I'm going from memory. You can go read it for yourself. Now, we know what's causing a lot of the breast cancer. And, and see, that's how my little brain works. 
I see the CIA with a statement about we're going we're gonna to focus on diversity. All that's going to do is cause more people to get killed when you've got a bunch of people parading around and jumping around in front of jihadis. Why don't you, the CIA director, who is an admitted Wahhabist, who's converted to Islam, that's admitted, okay? He lived over there for many years. An Arabist, as they would say, this guy is saying we all need to just be more diverse. Why don't you tell the gay people to go over to Saudi Arabia and do that and then they get their heads chopped off? Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't tell the Saudis to do that. He just he just lectures us. Yeah, there it is, PubMed.gov. Glyphosate induces human breast cancer cells growth via estrogen receptors. <gasps> oh, that, oh, 2013. They knew that 30 years ago and they approved that weapon. You know what grows big, fat, juicy brain tumors in all monkey species is given to it? You know what kills more than half the rhesus monkey babies when it's added in a regular dose that you get in Diet Coke to the milk in 1975 study? Aspartame. Equal. Oh, it'll equalize you, all right. But they just changed the name when he was the head of Searle. Rumsfeld couldn't get it approved. So then they just changed the name and got it approved in 1981. And it's killed tens of millions of people, just like glyphosate has. But don't worry when your mommy or your daughter is in there getting radiated and dying from breast cancer. Don't listen to the conspiracy theorist, okay? Because I was a little mean about how I talked about it, even though I personally have been hit by this and am sick of it. I have no right to try to save people or warn anyone. I just shut up, don't I? I'm that evil person that told you four and a half years ago our government was running al-Qaeda in Syria and was changing the name to ISIS a year before they did and all the rest of it now confirmed, declassified, admitted. The truth is, I'm telling the truth. The truth is people can't handle the truth to quote that movie with Jack Nicholson, A Few Good Men. You want answers? I'm here giving you answers. I'm giving you bibliographed proof in triplicate every day. The difference is, what are you going to do about it? So let's play as we go to break. The CIA director, John Brennan. John Brennan, who's lived for decades in Saudi Arabia with those pervs, lecturing us about how he wants us to be diverse. This from the most hypocritical, it just makes me sick. Here it is. We have the John Brennan clip. Dun, 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 dun. A key part of this mindset is our commitment to making our workforce as diverse as the world we cover. Just last week, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence issued a report showing that the intelligence community is significantly less diverse than the rest of the federal workforce. This is a report that forces those of us in the intelligence community to confront some hard truths about who we are and how we are performing our mission. As this committee knows, CIA recently unveiled a landmark effort to make sure that our workforce reflects in our attitudes, our backgrounds, our ethnicities, and our perspectives, the nation we work so hard to defend. Yeah, this is both a moral stand. and a mission imperative. I truly believe that the business case for diversity is stronger for CIA than it is for any other organization in the U.S. government. Diversity not only gives us the cultural understanding we need to operate in any corner of the globe, it also helps us avoid groupthink, ensuring we bring to bear a range of perspectives on the complex challenges that are inherent to intelligence. Oh, that's enough. Okay, when he says groupthink, they, they're not allowed to say radical Islam even. So that's total groupthink. They're not allowed to target any of the real people. The father of this guy was brought in by the CIA. It's now admitted and visited Obama at the White House. And his, 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 his brother-in-law runs bringing the, the uh, so-called immigrants in, the invaders in, the migrants. We use the proper groupthink word. And then his answers just had little pink triangles all over the CIA. And that'll stop it. What a sick joke. So John Brennan, who's lived over a decade in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, I mean, is just swapping spit with the royal family, total insider. They're going to put up some pink triangles and uh, hire, quote, more gay people at the CIA. That'll, that'll stop the jihadis they brought in from killing us. But he goes on to admit to Congress, we haven't reduced ISIS terror reach and capacity. And CNN had a clip of that. Now, here's the memo received by Clinton. Obama admin aided group that became ISIS to control area where ISIS formed caliphate. And the Defense Department's put out memos, you name it. This is all admitted. And a secret classified intel report. 
that we've been telling you about for years. I mean, I'm not bragging. I just hear it from us, you know, four or five years before. But 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 there it is from Breitbart. These people are running this. They're giving them weapons drops. The, the Iraqi government for three years has been saying, you're running ISIS, you're running Al-Qaeda. Anderson Cooper supported these groups taking over Egypt, remember? When they were blowing up churches and crucifying Christians, they were calling them revolutionaries and CNN wouldn't cover it. Cooper is CIA. And I want to explain something. I'm not even saying the CIA itself is what's bad. It's just this big unaccountable group operating since 1947 on its own with criminal elements running it like Spectre. That's what it is. It, 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 I mean, we are just wide open. We've been conquered by whatever criminal groups run it, and they do whatever they want. And the propaganda they, they have for the schools is mommy and daddy is bad. Private property is bad. Your guns are bad. You want to see what the Ford Foundation, Carnegie Foundation that runs the CIA and other groups is about. Look at the news. Look at what they want to do to us. They are our enemy. They are a Vichy French occupying group. And again, the Vichy French were the people that sold out to Hitler before he invaded and then became the government two weeks later. These are, these are traitors, folks. They're sold out to the Chinese government, the communist, uh, the radical Islamics, the, the, the Saudis. And so they're now trying to pass laws to shut us up, to shut patriots up. Homeland Security says its number one enemy is returning veterans and gun owners. Their whole preparation is to fight conservative governors because it's a foreign takeover. That isn't rhetoric. And by the way, the good news is 95% of special forces knows that we have foreign elements running our government. They know we're an occupied nation, government within a government. They understand the score. And they finally, four and a half years ago, said we're not going to aid al-Qaeda. It's over. And the split was huge, so Obama has fired thousands of different people in the brass, and they are putting people in who were secretaries and things. And a bunch of weirdos from Harvard who've never been in combat, and all sorts, I mean, uh, good. This is a total group of evil people that, that will cause total disrespect in the military, and their days are numbered. Now, the danger is, though, they've never been in wars, so they're starting wars with Russia now. We're going to cover this coming up. So I say, you know, thank God if they start a civil war with us, they're run by a bunch of potential pushers and, you know, weirdos. But at the same time, they're starting a war with Russia up against their borders in three different areas, starting a war with them, sending in proxy armies. And now NATO has come out. It's on Infowars.com. NATO says it might now have grounds to attack Russia. That's from Infowars.com going off the NATO announcements. Then there's uh, say what NATO could use controversial uh, could use conventional weapons to respond to cyber attacks and is now saying a cyber attack on anything in the U.S. or any other infrastructure in Europe will be called an act of war by Russia. They'll just claim Russia did it and then attack Russia. So this is huge developments. We're going to break all that down. Uh, Jakari Jackson's in here at the bottom of the next hour, but before that, I'm going to play this clip, probably about eight after or so, that is just amazing. It's up on Infowars.com video. 16-year-old black Trump supporter schools leftist in epic debate. That's a great headline, but it's not even good enough. 16-year-old black Trump supporter schools black lives matter moron in epic debate. And we're changing that headline right now because this black lives matter person is just the perfect Hillary supporter. Dumber, more ignorant than you can imagine. I mean, it's, it's just like the Mark Dice videos. We're not just cherry picking this. This is who these people are. We're reaching out to the military. We're reaching out to the security services. We're giving them the full spectrum analysis, which is just common sense. They're looking into our research and concurring with it and taking the research to the next level. But of course, a lot of people in the government and corporations knew what was happening before I did. I was just crazy enough to go on air and talk about it and make films and aggressively prosecute an info war. And we have caused, you have caused, the real muscle of this operation and the humat and the eyes and ears and the brains, and the guts and everything else, and the feet, and the blood. You are the resistance. You are the full body politic. We have just absolutely chewed them up, man. They got bites and stab wounds and holes. They're bleeding out. They are just trying to fail forward. Hillary's trying to crawl into the presidency. Tells she's all hopped up on drugs, about to collapse any moment, completely insane. I mean, we got these squirrels scared, and we're just surging. 
We're committed. And there's no backing down. There's no turning around. It's a good feeling. It's sick when you look at how evil the enemy is and how twisted and how dishonorable they are. But I've just got to control myself and not look too closely. I've got to just coldly look at what they're doing, analyze it and resist it, and then have my passion for victory and feel good. I've got to get my, my morale up, even though because we're having a lot of victories. But I, I just they're so sickening and so degenerate and such a joke and so weak and the gaggles of fawning pimps and minions and sycophants that, 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 that can't follow these traitors. Uh, makes me just absolutely get in a very nasty mood. And I'm, I'm really working through it to be in a happy mood because we are kicking their ass and just to move forward. I also know why I'm angry. I know how dangerous they are, and my flesh doesn't like messing with these dangerous people at a certain level. And so I get mad that they make me fight them. I get mad they make me sit here and savagely attack them and, and just engage in vicious information warfare against them and just push them and attack them and bite them and and and, and because believe me they come right back at us folks and I, I just it's just i just cannot stand them i mean that's really what it comes down to and i see the trail of bodies and the trail of souls the trail of dreams they've destroyed these dream catchers and i i just they're demons folks they're absolute manifest pit of hell, everything I hate. And at a gut level, my, my whole body, my whole soul just goes, just, I just want to overrun them. Because I know they're out to get everybody. I know their spirit. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can see it. I can feel it. And it's just like, oh. Just, oh my God, you're evil. You child molesting, demonic pig creatures. And I see you, I know you of old, and I just can feel the epic battle rising as the energies ramp up for the big main event. <sighs> And anybody else with any sense, any discernment, can see it, can feel it, and knows it, and can, and can physically see it manifesting in front of us. So start your engines for the next 25 minutes before Jakari Jackson comes in. I am going to get to everything I haven't hit yet and a bunch of powerful clips we need to go to. 16-year-old black Trump supporter schools. Moronic Black Lives Matter minion. Dan Rather. Oh, this is incredible. This is incredible. This is incredible. I'm going to tell you about Dan Rather first when we come back and what he said and what he did. This is simply amazing. Uh, it's up on Infowars.com, but I'm going to put it up there under Pacific Headline because this is a pretty big deal. And then we're going to get to a lot of other uh, key reports here. I have some criticism of the uh, police uh, and their policies. All right, in this hour, we were one of the first to actually get this and report this uh, yesterday. Just proud of Mikhail Phelan's work. It got linked up on DrudgeReport.com. Hacker releases secret Clinton docs from the State Department DNC Trump opposition file donor list. And I've looked at it. It looks accurate. And so far, at least as of this morning, they're saying that uh, they believe it's real. This is Guccifer 2.0. Uh, some are claiming that it's the Russians. Well, I just say more power to them because it was the Russians that exposed the uh, carbon tax fraud with over a thousand universities coordinating with each other to, quote, hide the decline in temperature in the last seven years. And that was six years ago. So that's coming up. We're about to play a clip video. 16-year-old black Trump supporter, schools, leftist, Black Lives Matter, ding dong. Uh, Dallas Police Department is practicing riot control ahead of Donald Trump's visit. So we're going to have reporters up there uh, tonight covering that event. And, and in my experience, when I've had anti-fellow reserve rallies and things, we've had more opposition from leftists in Dallas than I've even gotten in Denver, Colorado, and New York City, or San Antonio, or Houston, because uh, I've protested the Fed at all those places, the private run-for-profit Fed. I mean, I've had them really come after us in Dallas. 
So privately, I had a bet in here, and I'll just say it now, uh, with Tim Kennedy that that I was like, no, I don't think San Antonio is where it's going to happen. Of course, Trump canceled that. It's going to be Dallas. And I'm not saying it's going to be that out of control because the Dallas police are pretty serious. They didn't mess with us too much when we had our JFK event for the 40th anniversary because they banned protesting the city had, but I, I still went and demanded to do it and threatened to sue. But then they called in the county to attack us. That's that's you know, famous video for no reason. I mean, uh, the police were leaving us alone at a Federal Reserve demonstration. Then they came and this lady came and said, no, you can't protest without a permit. And I said, I'm going to do it. She goes, the riot police are coming. And I said, we've already been out here two hours. Everybody, let's just leave. <laughs> we just showed you on video doing that. And again, I'm not out to get the police themselves. I don't just hate the police. But leave the First Amendment alone. Leave the Second alone. And when you get orders to violate it, don't go along with it. I mean, all over the country, I watch leftist groups, Black Lives Matter, you name it, attack police. And they're ordered to stand there and take it because these, these cities are run by a bunch of globalists. But then we're trying to get permits in Cleveland, officially with Roger Stone. And we have that group coming on next hour. They want me to be an added plaintiff for the lawsuit, and I am going to be. And they're just saying, oh, you can have a couple hours, you know, twice over miles away where nobody can see you in a free speech zone. Well, no, we're going to sue you. So you know, a lot of times the police are put in the middle of this, though, and the police will say, well, go change it or, or sue the city or, you know, uh, go to city council. We're just following orders. Yeah, but Nuremberg, the Nuremberg precept, at a certain point, you got to say no. Just like the military said no four and a half years ago to aiding al-Qaeda. It was just too much. We're not giving them Stinger missiles. We're not giving them tow missiles. We know you've already done it. We know about Benghazi. We're not doing this. So... That's what's going to save us is saying no. And then they can't just target one good cop or one good soldier. At a certain point, all of us have to say no. I've said no. You think I want to go march up about, you know, against the police when they're saying no protest and get arrested? I've been arrested three times doing it, though, because the First Amendment is important. But here's a bad example. This is out of uh, Arlington uh, Voice. But the good news is it's the police exposing it. Police union exposes department's long denied quota system. I love how all these departments deny quotas, and then they've got quotas. Unwritten or written, you get promoted when you write more tickets. And I don't care if you write tickets of real drunk drivers or arrest them or somebody really speeding or whatever, but when you've just got some old lady pulled over and her stickers out and you write her three tickets or you harass, you know, the 18-wheelers because they had dust on their bumper or whatever. I mean, the truck police are the ones that are really just, just, just destroying a lot of lives. And, 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 and basically are the equivalent of pirates out there just revenue generating. An Arlington police union is exposing the department's informal quota system after 15 patrol officers were placed on administrative leave for inflating traffic stop data. Internal emails and documents. I mean, you think cops really just want to pull you over and give you tickets, folks? They don't. Internal emails and documents released by the Arlington Municipal Patrolmen's Association is shedding light on the department's use of informal quota-based performance systems to withhold privileges from underperforming officers, so good for the officers, and that's what you need. See, I said it's a bad story about police. It's bad about the leadership. It's good for the grassroots police. They've got plenty of real crimes to investigate. The justice system needs to be going in there with huge fines against criminals that commit crimes against property and things. Don't give a lady a $100 ticket for their stickers out a month. Somebody that robs a car, go bust a chop shop, put them all in jail, seize all of it, take their houses when you've convicted them. But they don't do that. They just plea bargain, and then the guys at the, cop, uh, the, 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 the chop shop, if they even get in trouble, get probation. So the revenue generating has to stop. So, so that's a good story because it shows how these paradigms are complex. It's bad the police are doing this, but... Nine times out of ten, whether it's Houston or whether it's New York, I see these stories. It's the police exposing that the crime lab's corrupt. It's the police exposing that they're ordered to go out. Remember a few years ago, the police union in New York said, look, we're ordered to give old ladies tickets for sitting more than five minutes on a park bench. We're ordered to uh, just totally harass people. Everybody hates us now. We don't want to do this. And so they had to start backing off of that. And that's an example of how, of how the police can put unique pressure on government itself. But the globalists with this whole divide and conquer strategy and this strong city UN initiative don't want the citizens to ever interface with the police or real community to. They want it to be the UN and the local 
socialist organizations and the Black Lives Matter, George Soros, Ford Foundation groups coming in, bullying the departments, terrorizing them, exacerbating crises, scapegoating all governmental problems on the police and sheriff's departments so they then become totally political and go under leftist control. And then, boy, once that happens, you get a Chicago, a New York, a D.C., a total hellhole. Every time. These people will wreck your society socialist when they get control of the police department. It is a living hell. And police departments know this. And then you get political police that sit there and laugh while the social justice warriors beat you up. Now, I've got some concern about Donald Trump, and I rarely do, but a lot of times it's because he's super smart, but sometimes he doesn't fully understand some technical subjects. Or he's causing a debate for political purposes. He's sly like a fox, but he put out a tweet, and I'll cover it in the next segment, where he said, I'll be meeting with the NRA to see what Homeland Security owners are calling for. But here's a tweet. I'll be meeting with the NRA who has endorsed me about not allowing people on terrorist watch lists or the no-fly list to buy guns. Now, that, that, uh, is that a neutral statement, or does it kind of sound like he's going to be meeting with them about a not allowing people on the terror watch list or the no-fly list to buy guns? It sounds like he's saying he's going to be meeting with them about asking for that. It, it's not clear. It's ambiguous, but it leans 60-40 towards that. So Donald Trump needs to get educated on this, or he needs to clarify what he's saying. I, I, I don't know which it is, because... This ends due process, and the NRA came back and said, we support due process systems if someone's on a no-fly list having that flagged in the NICS system, but not denying it of you if there's not any credible threat or indictment or investigation. We need due process, is what the NRA said. They're absolutely right. This will end due process and allow putting gun owners on these no-gun buy lists. It's very, very serious situation, and it's the holy grail they've been pushing for for eight years and so I hope Trump clarifies that. He shoots out a lot of tweets. Uh, we'll certainly find out. But I'm going to shoot a special message later today after the show just to Donald Trump on this subject of the no-fly list. And as I know it gets to him uh, to try to give him a briefing on the subject. Uh, or perhaps I'm wrong and he it just I'm, I'm misinterpreting this and he needs to clarify. Uh, we're going to go to break. But, but first, I want to just play now the Shikari Jackson clip or part of it. We'll play more when he joins us at the bottom of the hour. 16-year-old, uh, super informed black Trump supporter, schools leftist Black Lives Matter uh, person. This is up on Infowars.com, but here's two minutes of the clip as we go to break. It's powerful stuff in Atlanta, Georgia. Here it is. We're gonna drop Hillary! T-R-U-M-B! We're gonna drop Hillary! T-R-U-M-B! We're gonna drop Hillary! That's sad. That's real sad. He's against you. Why will you why will you support a racist? He's going to send you back to Africa. That's what he said. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. Oh, you're you're you you are just you are a disgrace to America. They can for being a young black man they supporting you. a racist. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. How does your parents feel about you holding a Trump sign? How does your parents feel? About you holding a Trump sign? How does your parents feel? Where they just disgrace to America too because he doesn't like you or your All parents. My friends, yeah, you didn't answer my question. Yeah, you didn't answer our question. And they're happy. What has he said? He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. No, he said. He said don't let Muslims here. Yeah, he said. Why? He's, are you going to let me talk or are you going to yell? No, I'm telling you because you're you holding this Trump plan and you need to be talked. We can't have conversation, can we? We cannot do that, right? And then oh, okay, well, okay. okay. Telling you well, against your own people. She just graduated high Trump school, so she's not a kid no more. Okay. Uh, what would you tell him when a racist Tim no, sent Mexican back to Mexico? We're going to come back with more of this, but this guy is wearing a gay rainbow when Trump try, is trying to support folks that are gay not being killed by jihadis that, that, that Hillary's supporting. And then Mexico has one of the strongest border controls in the world with Guatemala, Central America, and they torture people and they put them six months to, to a year hard labor. And Mexico has said they can't take any more migrants even to the U.S. because it's bankrupting them. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> the U.S. is one of the most open countries in the world. And now it's offering all this free stuff to illegals to create this divide and conquer. And this guy is so stupid. We'll be back with more of it. Stay with us. This just broke in the last few minutes. We're going to work to get Paul Watson from London. He's just back from Germany covering Bilderberg and the Brexit. 
The globalists set up the EU. It's unaccountable, unelected. Uh, the, the, the EU didn't let any of the countries but two out of 20-something vote to enter it. They won't let you vote to get out of it. They're, they're even trying to say, we may just ignore you if you try it. They're, 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 they're threatening economic blockades, you name it. But they've got a lot of liberals and others now, not just conservatives and nationalists, wanting to leave because almost all their laws are made by an unelected body of three EU boards. The parliament is ceremonial. And once that's known, it doesn't matter if you're liberal or you're conservative, you speak out against it. Well, here's the bad news. British Labour Party, that's liberal, like Democrat, British politician Joe Cox has died after she was attacked near Leeds. Police say a suspect is in custody. He shot her and stabbed her. She's a leading figure leading the liberals to what they believe is going to be a five to ten point victory for the British to leave the Euro, the Brexit. And she was terminated. Watch, it'll be some mentally ill person on SSRIs who was under government psychiatry, psychiatric control, like Sirhan Sirhan. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, she was at a public event and she was shot and stabbed. Oh, there's like a total gun ban in the UK, but magically, the anti-EU Labour Member of Parliament executed with a gun in gun-free jolly old England. I mean, what is the headline on that? British lawmaker killed in shock attack ahead of EU vote. Oh, shock attack. The globalists mean business. You know, today, I came on the start of the broadcast with this five-shot, 410, with triple-ot buck handgun. And I walked in to my concealed carry crew and said, it's always important for everybody to be armed, isn't it? But, oh, she was safe in England. They have basically a gun ban. What is it, less than one-tenth of one percent of the population has shooting clubs where sh shotguns and hunting rifles are held, and you go and the hunt master lets you get your gun out, and then you all go out and you hunt, and they'll now usually have to have a sheriff or someone along with you. All because of a couple mass shootings they had there. It's not that bad in Australia, but close. And now she's dead. So, anti-EU... Member of Parliament executed ahead of EU vote. That's your headline. In fact, put that earlier headline up. They got it. Anti-EU member of parliament executed ahead of Brexit vote. That is simply amazing. In fact, the headline I'm going to go with it on this is exactly uh, that other headline. You guys put that back on screen if you those headlines you just had. Again, for TV viewers, for radio listeners, go to Infowars.com forward slash show. Yeah, I'd say Yahoo News got the headline right. British lawmaker killed in shock attack ahead of EU vote. Now, uh, uh, I would just say this. Um, leading voice calling for exit from EU executed ahead of vote. Oh, there's nothing suspicious here. Kind of like what happened with Scalia. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful. Everything's okay. Everybody go back to sleep. This is so sad. And they've been executing nationalists all over the EU. Usually Muslims come up and shoot them or kill them. Even though when they're not anti-Muslim, it's it just that's usually the executor, the executioner. A little wind-up toy because their imam will be controlled by the globalists. And then the message goes down to Habib, you know, that he needs to tell his flock that this person needs to die. And then they die. Oh, they die. Because, see, Islam is natural mind control. And I'm not saying this guy's going to be a Muslim. I'm just saying a lot of cases it is. Because it's so cultural, it's so controlling, it's all about dying, it's all about, you know, you know, doing whatever you have to. It's all about never getting along with anybody, basically. I mean, I got articles here today in Afghanistan where they have sex slaves, little girls, that are Muslims, that they just grab and force to go out and lure in other Muslims to kill them. They're all just killing each other. This is crazy. Paul Joseph Watson will be on at 45 after. Jakari Jackson's coming in right after this break to talk about social justice warriors. But there's the headline. Taliban uses honey trap boys, yeah, little boys too, not just little girls, to kill Afghan police. Because uh, pedophilia 
and, and, and homosexuality is so ubiquitous in Muslim countries, especially Afghanistan, they send out little boys to lure them to their deaths. But just like the, 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 you know, this Afghan immigrant, his parents are from there, CIA brought him in, admittedly. He goes, hangs out, he's on the gay apps, he's, but then he separately goes and kills him. Because, see, it's okay when he does it. Because as long as he kills them later. I mean, this is just a mental patient cult of total screwballs. We have Paul Watson joining us in about 10 minutes. Shikari Jackson is going to be riding shotgun with us for the rest of the hour to talk about social justice wars and some of the amazing footage he got out in Atlanta and other areas the last few days. It's now going viral. Uh, but the first reports came out five minutes ago about this labor MP, Joe Cox, dies that were being shot and stabbed. And some of the first reports were that she was pro-Brexit because most of the Labor Party is pro-exiting the Euro because even liberals realize that you shouldn't have an unelected group controlling uh, your nation. But reportedly, and we have her tweets, she actually said immigration is not legitimate concern, but it's not a good reason to leave the EU. Again, immigration is a legitimate concern, but it's not a good reason to leave the EU. So she was uh, reportedly on the fence or, 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 or pro-Europe, and that now they're saying, again, these are tentative reports just now coming out, that whoever shot and stabbed her in the gun-free zone of the UK uh, screamed, you know, uh, don't stay in the Brexit when he attacked her. So is this a false flag to try to turn the polls against the UK leaving the unelected EU? Or is it someone really mad about the fact that a foreign power has occupied their nation? I'm not pushing for violence, and I think this will backfire if it was someone who was misguided and we're sad for her family. But, you know, the French were occupied by the Germans. This is a political occupation, but still, nevertheless, that's what's happening. And so it's very, very similar to the Vichy French. So at a certain point, if they do take all the delegates from Bernie Sanders and give it to Hillary, do people have a right to get upset and angry? I'm not saying they should do that at this point, but at, 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 at what point when they start picking the candidates for us, what do we do? I, I want to put bookends on this until Watson joins us, but we'll also ask Jakari Jackson's uh, view on that. Now, before I go any further uh, here today, we're running a special because Tim Kennedy, uh, one of the top soldiers in the U.S. military, is now an analyst and a reporter for Infowars.com. And so we're very excited about the fact he's been doing a lot of special reports and uh, productions for us all over the world in between hunting Hitler and all the other things he's doing. He's got a movie that he helped produce that's premiering on 800 movie screens, uh, Range 15 tonight as well. A lot of actors I really like, like uh, William Shatner and others. Uh, but that's a side issue. Uh, Tim Kennedy's uh, game changer, 15% off the three products he loves. Uh, and that's Super Male Vitality. Also, Super Female Vitality goes for that. Uh, Brain Force. And, of course, the Secret 12, Vitamin B12, Organic Sublingual Drops. All of those together are 15% off or by themselves 15% off at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. And uh, the money we make from this obviously makes everything we're doing here possible. We want to get a few more reporters, a few more editors, video people, uh, and crew so we can really always have crews out there, like in Dallas today for the Trump rally coming up at 7 o'clock tonight for the news, and like the EU and, and, and covering the, 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 the Brexit at Bilderberg with three reporters, uh, or just pretty much all the time we've got reporters on the ground with this crew we've built. Jakari just got back from Atlanta. So thank you all for your support at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. All Alexa Pure Water filters are 20% off right now. A special's running. InfoWarsStore.com and so much more. But from solar uh, base station power supply units, the very best out there at the lowest prices, uh, to you name it, they're all available at InfoWarsStore.com. Okay, uh, shifting gears here in a moment, back to what Jakari Jackson has been covering. He just got back from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, really got a whole bunch of amazing videos that are going viral right now that really just tell us more of the same story over and over again that the Black Lives Matter groups, the, the Bernie Sanders groups, the liberal groups, the socialist groups, it's just like the Mark Dice videos or the videos we shoot in Austin. I'm sorry. You go to a supposed liberal area, a university area, they a lot of times don't even know what planet they're on. And they really are angry and feel wronged 
and will run up particularly to, quote, minorities. A lot of times white people do this to Hispanics or black folks and say, what are you doing here? He's racist. He's bad. He's evil. Even if you don't like Donald Trump, they've been misrepresenting what he really says and what he does. And Jakari got footage of arrests that were made, uh, just all sorts of stuff there in Atlanta. Uh, we're going to have, again, two of our reporters up there tonight in Dallas. We'll have live feeds on the nightly news, 7 o'clock Central. Find details at Infowars.com forward slash show. But Jakari, before we play a few minutes of this 10-minute viral video, obviously there's a lot when you're out there with a the camera that people don't see. What is your sense of covering these events? Well, with this one in particular, it was a much calmer event. I know we showed some of the footage of the arrest right there, but... Uh, this can pales in comparison to some place like Albuquerque, where people were lighting fires and throwing barricades. And all. You got hit in the head with a rock. Yeah, I got hit in the head with a rock. So this was a much calmer crowd. It was a much smaller crowd as well. Uh, if you take away all the journalists, I'd say there were maybe three or 400 people there at any given time, as opposed to some place like Albuquerque or Anaheim, where you had thousands. So it was a much calmer situation, but tempers did flare, and that's uh, some of the footage that we have coming up. Uh, this one thing in particular... It was a conversation between an older gentleman and a younger guy. I think the younger guy was about 16 or so. And he was a Trump supporter, young black man. And the older guy comes up to him. He says, you're a disgrace. And I run into this a lot. When we went out to Albuquerque, there's a similar thing where uh, Latinos were yelling at each other. You're not, you know, a real Latino if you support Donald Trump. And they're saying a similar thing to this young black man saying that you're not a real black person if you support Donald Trump. Now, it wasn't don't support any of these candidates. It was like, you don't support Donald Trump, but you have to support Hillary. And I'm like, why would I want to support Hillary? Uh, Miss saying she wants to go out and put hot sauce on all of her, her food. You know, very racist statements like that. Completely ridiculous. But he was very convinced that Hillary Clinton was the person for the nation, uh, even to the point where they criticized Trump. And as you were mentioning there, Alex, if you want to criticize the guy, there's legitimate ways to do it. But when you say that Trump wants to send black people back to Africa... I have never heard him say or even allude. Oh, by the way, I wanted to play this clip for over a month, two weeks. I keep forgetting to play it. It's the little Jewish kids. Can you guys pull up the Brainwash Kids clip uh, for later where they just keep saying, I'm Jewish and he hates Jews. It, yeah. I, mean, I mean, have you ever heard Trump say, send no. Africans to Africa? No, and that's what they these people do. They'll take a grain of truth where he says he wants to send people who came here illegally, keyword illegally, uh, back to their homelands or whatever, and you can have your feelings about that. But the issue is they so stretch this out of uh, proportion, even when they talk about uh, Hispanics coming into the country. They say he wants to send all Hispanics back to Mexico. Well, number one, they're not all from Mexico. Beyond that, he didn't say he wants to send them back if they came here legally, if they've been here legally. And he said make a faster path for them to legally come here. Yeah. But you can't just say we capitulate to 30, 40 million people. You're just legal now. And that's what these guys don't understand. And the guy in the video had clearly no understanding of immigration policy to the point where he's talking about Trump's wife needs to go back to wherever she's from. And people are saying she came here legally. There's a way to legally enter well, the United States. Well, that's another thing about America. Trump. His family is married to people from all over the world, Asian folks, you name it. He has a, one of the highest levels of putting, quote, minorities and women in executive positions. That's why he's got so many people that actually work for him coming out and defending him. And people have looked at the numbers. It's true. So the truth is, when it comes to this, they're totally making it up, and they're trying to basically just play on people's ignorance, hoping they don't know what Trump really said. And and but but another thing is, uh, this older gentleman that's uh, yelling at the young uh, Trump supporter, he's got a rainbow flag on. He mm -hmm. he's speaking with a lisp. I mean, he he looks like you know he's a classic effeminate gay man. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but he's wearing a rainbow flag. Probably is. And you just saw 49 gay people murdered. Trump is out there saying this is terrible, this is horrible. You shouldn't attack people for their sexual preferences. The Muslim leaders are, 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 are not apologizing. He's not mad at them. He's mad at Trump. He just doesn't seem to get it. That's absolutely, you hit the nail on the head right there, Alex. I ran into so many people out there who were saying, were basically blaming Trump for what happened in Orlando. I'm like, how is that Trump's fault? that a person took it upon himself to go into a gay bar and kill people. Wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute. I haven't seen those videos yet. You've got video where they blame Trump for Orlando? This is just people walking around talking. God, I wish you had that on blog, because I've yeah. seen that in emails and see comments, but they. I want to ask him, he's the guy that's trying to stop this. I, wow, you actually heard that? Yeah, these are opinions of people. They, they want to blame him for everything. Everything is this man's fault. Oh, I've seen people in Albuquerque blaming the economy on him. Yeah. And I'm like, the guy's not even, he's not even a politician. He's never even been in office. I was like, how's that his, I mean, these these guys, when we went out to Albuquerque, uh, these 20-year-old uh, or whatever uh, uh, Bernie supporters, they were blaming this guy, Donald Trump, for things that have been going on their entire lifetimes. And the man's 
just now becoming a politician. How is any of this stuff Donald Trump's fault? Whether That's what's him incredible. Or hate him, you're blaming him for stuff that he has nothing to do with. I've got a concern with him putting this tweet out to the NRA saying he wants to talk to them about banning people from having guns. Yeah, They're on a no-fly list. That, it, 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 if he's saying that, uh, do you think I'm misinterpreting that tweet? Or uh, Cold text is not the easiest thing to interpret, you know, so we can wait and see what he actually has He needs to, to clarify it. Yeah, I would say I would behoove him to, to, cl to clarify that statement. Are you going to be concerned if he does want to just randomly oh, ban people? Absolutely, because we, you, you and I both know this, Alex. That we've seen multiple times uh, young children being put on the no-fly list. I mean, it's not because they themselves are on the list, but they have a similar name to somebody who does. But if you have this, not just no-fly, no-buy, but you extend that to all walks of life. Now let's say some the 15-year-old or the 5-year-old the Boy Scout, when he becomes 18 and he wants to join the military, he's a military-aged male on a no-fly list. You think they're going to let him in? Sure, Absolutely it's an extrajudicial not. list, and, the, and even the NRA said, hey, we're looking at ways to do this where it follows due process. This is the end of due process if they're able to do it. Speaking of the brainwashing clip, here are Jewish children saying Donald Trump hates Jews when his daughter is married to, uh, I mean, multiple members of the family are married to Jews. I mean, this is just the biggest load of bull. Here it is. Donald Trump! Donald Trump! Why do you like Trump? Because, because he's racist. Because he's racist. He hates Muslims. He wants to destroy Muslims. And I have friends that are Muslims, and he's mean to Jews, and I'm All right, that's enough. I can't play the whole thing. It's up on Infowars.com. Now, 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 here's what I love about the anti-Semite groups that say the Jews are all one big brain and all, uh, you know, agree with each other. These are hardcore liberal Jews who literally are the main people wanting to bring in radical Muslims who, whether, which side of this you're on, I'm not on either, do kill each other and particularly Arabs killing Jews, and these little kids are going, Donald Trump is mean to the Muslims, and he, he's mean to the Jews. It's all just total made-up garbage. But here are the Jews teaching their Jewish children that Donald Trump wants to hurt them, but that the Muslims love them. I, I mean, the left, particularly leftist Jews, are the most brainwashed, crazy people I've ever seen in my life. They are the most self-loathing nuts. And then I see the white supremacists going, I fell on a banana pill, a Jew did it. And I go, there's a bunch of different groups of Jews. How do you sit there and say there's one group? There's like seven or eight major you know, bodies of different Jewish political thought. And then there's so many other groups of individuals you can't even say. It's, it's like, it's this labeling. You're black, Jakari, you got to support Hillary. Mm -hmm. or, or, or I'm white, I got to support Trump. I mean, what does this even mean? It's just so dumbed down. What do you make of that clip? It's very shocking, but honestly, I've seen things like that when I go out into the streets. This is very, uh, what I've heard referred to as the hive mindset. Because you're, you know, X, whether that's race, religion, whatever else, you can like this person or you can't like that person. And that's pretty much what we continue to Wow. Be. We're going to break. I'm going to come back with two segments with Paul Watson, Angie Carrier riding shotgun on this investigation. First, the news was saying she might have been for the exiting of the EU. Then they're saying uh, that uh, she's not. And then the guy yells, you know, don't, you know, don't uh, stay in the uh, EU and then shoots her uh, in England. She's dead. Member of Parliament, we're going to find out, is this waving the red shirt, the sympathy vote to make sure that the uh, UK stays in the EU? We're going to find out from Paul Watson, at least his latest first look from London straight ahead. But let's go out to break with the 16-year-old. It's a 10-minute clip, but only two minutes of it. 16-year-old um, black Trump supporter, schools, leftist, Black Lives Matter, ding dong. Here it is. Hillary, T R U M B. We're gonna drop Hillary, T R U M B. Who are we gonna drop? Hillary. That's sad. That's real sad. He's against you. Why will you Why will you support a racist? Please want to send you back to Africa. That's what he said. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. You. You are just you, you are a disgrace to America. Thank you. For being a young black man Thank supporting you. a racist. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. That's sad. Yes, it is. 
awesome. How does your parents feel about you holding a Trump thing? Where they disgrace to America too because he doesn't like you or your parents. Telling him that you're not a real black man, you can't be a black man if you support somebody like Donald Trump. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. No, he said. He said don't let Muslims here. Yeah, he said. Why? He's, are you going to let me talk or are you going to yell? No, I'm telling you because... And that's what it is. They don't want you to talk. They just want to yell at you. He doesn't want any type of real debate, any type of real discussion with this young man. He just wants to yell at him these talking points that he's been convinced of by whoever, which are completely false. When a racist Tim sent Mexican back to Mexico. When I asked this guy, Mexico deports almost everybody. I, I, I don't get it. We have like one of the most open things in the world. He's saying we're evil. Illegals. I would have loved to have asked him, why are you wearing that rainbow flag and hating Trump? I, mean, I bet he would have said Trump did it. Well, you said people were saying Trump's fault for Orlando. Every, it, Trump's fault is for everything. If you get in a car wreck today, it's Donald Trump's fault. That's fine. You don't have to. Real land. If he elected, he would be against you because of your skin color, your man. And you're probably like thirty something, but you're you're not a sixteen year old. He's against black people. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Go listen to him. Yeah. I love how the young man's trying to talk to him. It's like a teenager. Yeah, he's 16. And, and then you got this guy just completely angry. Oh, I you know, that rally, you see a lot of yeah, black people. Lot. You know what? The media won't show you that, though. People in there are going to stand up against Trump. Okay. You More sure, black sure about that? What sure about, about that? people that he asked his, his security guards to kick out of the rally? Oh, and Valdosta Val Val State? And, of course, you can ask him, why does Trump have record numbers of black supporters compared to other Republican candidates? Mm -hmm. uh, usually Republicans get 10%. He's got like 25 in polls. And I love this lady. <laughs> she can just get those in her two cents. He does the exact same thing to white people, too, so... Yeah, I'm going to skip this break. Just this one today. I just can't help it. Again, Jakari, describe this for, for, for radio listeners exactly okay, where you so, are in Atlanta. So where this is, this is the Fox Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. The, this is footage from yesterday. And there's a crowd of maybe three to 400 people there at any given time. And uh, particularly what this is, this is a lady who's now joined into the debate. And she's arguing with not just the, uh, the younger man, the 16-year-old, but also his friends, his high school friends. I've worked on many campaigns. So sad. It's very vague. Uh, that's, it's very sad. What campaign? I very sad that I being so big. president twice. Oh, okay. The, yeah, one of the worst guys ever. But okay. oh, oh, yeah. One of the worst guys ever. Let's look at the condition of our country. This country was built years. on love, not hate. Donald Trump. It's like a cult. They all just say the same stupid stuff. It is. Uh, they get the same talking points from wherever, and they just repeat them as if they're gospel. Religion, not religion. You believe in hate. You know this country? Do you know the history of his grandfather and father? Oh they were KK members. Okay. Uh, what? Yeah, I don't know. Listen to what he says, the young boy. Go, go Google it. No, you go Google it. He says you Google it. <laughs> but, I mean, that would be all over the news if that was the case. Oh, yeah. I don't know where these guys get this information. I would come back and say Hillary was brought into politics by a grand dragon. Yeah, and I was like, he, he, she went to a, a KKK funeral. Who's that Klansman? KKK. Klansman, okay. Who's against your color? Against your skin? Nothing about uh, the Clintons and the Dixie Mafia. I think the Democrat. Democratic Party founded the KKK, by the way. Just saying. Let me tell you. What I'm for the people. Yeah, what God, I'd love to debate that guy. I'm for the people. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's quite the same. We'll never be defeated. Okay. And that's why I believe we should. We should take this footage and put over at her with the plan and just show all the stuff. I mean, yeah. you can do a lot of stuff with it. I mean, oh, this is amazing. We got Carl the Cuck. We got Abe Skrillex. We got Trigley Puff. What would this guy's name be? Rainbow Dummy? <laughs> I'm not the best at names, but I'm sure somebody will come up with something. What do you mean? I think Trigley Puff is probably my favorite name. How do you think she got here? She's legal. She's not legal. She's from Europe. There's a way to legally immigrate. Exactly. He says how that was before. You can't bring people in now and have welfare and infrastructure and give it away free, or you collapse. People weren't getting welfare 300 years ago coming here. It was hell on earth. And everybody just keeps living in the past, man. I tell you, this is crazy. All right. Full videos up on Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, Jakari Jackson riding shotgun with us. We now shift gears to Labor MP, Member of Parliament, Joe Cox, has died after being shot three times in the street near her office by an attacker who shouted Britain first, then kicked her while she lay bleeding. And the first reports were because she was in labor, that she was probably for the British exit or the Brexit, but, but now uh, they're saying, no, no, she was for staying in the EU and that uh, he reportedly yelled, 
uh, shouted Britain first, then kicked her while she was lay bleeding and stabbed her. The big question is, how do you get a gun in a gun-free zone? What are they going to turn this into? Oh, you got to stay in the unelected EU now because somebody got shot? Uh, this is developing quick, but Paul Watson uh, always seems to have the answers on this. Paul Joseph Watson from London, England. Uh, Paul, what have you learned? Well, first of all, she is a left-wing politician. She's for the Remain campaign. But the truth about this is this so-called shout of Britain first seems like it's complete BS. They've gone back and asked the eyewitnesses who have said that he didn't say Britain first. Now it's emerged that he's mentally ill. He was on medication. I predicted that. that he, I predicted that yeah, in the first segment. Exactly. And he didn't shout anything political before he attacked and killed her. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to the left. This is the not all Muslims crowd. After every, every single Islamist terror attack, they come out and say, don't blame all Muslims. But immediately, within minutes, you could go on Twitter. They were all blaming conservatives, people who want to get out of the EU, lumping everybody in. with. OK, this. but am I wrong in saying that a lot of labor people actually want to get out, too, now, though? I mean, even the mayor of London. No, a lot of people, a lot of people within labor, including the leader of labor, but he won't campaign on it, do want to leave the EU. Paul Watson. But again, the eyewitnesses are now coming out and saying that this claim that the killer shouted Britain first is not true. Yet still people are all over Twitter claiming it is. The other angle to it is that, I mean, I predicted this. I've, I tweet so much, I can't even find the tweet anymore, but I've said it many times as the thunder roars outside you my You said window. two weeks ago there'll be some event on this show, uh, yeah, some type well, of terror attack or something, so they can, you know, make people that are uh, against uh, leaving look like terrorists. Yeah, and um, Charlie Skelton, who you had on last week, predicted it as well. He said, I'll not be surprised if there's a big noisy security terror scare just pre-referendum that's best dealt with by the UK being in the EU which, of course, they're going to blame it on people who want to leave the EU. The article I've got up on Infowars.com right now goes through that, some of the examples. Oh, wow, you already wrote an article in the last 30 minutes? Well, let's put it up on screen right now for TV viewers and radio listeners. Paul Joseph Watson has an article out, and I'll let you go quick so you can add more to it. But, wow, so so, there, so the witnesses are saying didn't say this. This stinks to high heaven because they usually have some mentally ill wind-up toy who is a leftist who they bring in to do it to create the sympathy, and, and then basically you know, add the political statements later. The political establishment will exploit the murder of Joe Cox to kill Brexit. Not all Muslims crowd will blame the vote-leave conservatives for shooting MP. Good point, Paul. Yeah, I mean, here's a quote from somebody prominent on Twitter. These Brexit hardliners are getting out of control. My thoughts go out to Joe Cox's family and friends. There are others who are talking about this is the responsibility of people who want to limit immigration into the into the United Kingdom. Like having a problem with 330,000 people coming in every single year means you sympathize with some mentally ill person who's just killed an MP. And so by the way, we know the numbers are higher than that, Paul, but I, I want to say this. Well, just like next. they've stolen the delegates from Bernie Sanders, when they really start canceling elections... When, when is the point you can physically resist? I mean, I'm not saying that she should have gotten killed. Uh, I think it's terrible. But, but I mean, the French were occupied by a foreign power. If you're occupied by an unelected EU that, that you didn't vote to enter, at what point are you not allowed to stand up and say no? Uh, I mean, to use the slave analogy, say, you know, 200 years ago in this country or whatever, I'd just say I'm not a slave and beat your brains out. I mean, at, at what point does it start getting too violent, Jakari? I don't know, but uh, it's definitely sad at this Young lady uh, or this prime minister lost her life, uh, and we'll just see what, what develops. Absolutely, but I mean, my point is, I'm not saying there should be any violence, but at a certain point, if, you're un if an unelected government is over you, what do you do to resist that? Just stop complying nonviolently? That's, that's a start. Yeah. I mean, that's what Martin Luther King did. Mm -hmm. and I guess that was, yeah. Paul, what do you think about that angle? Well, I mean, it's difficult to not comply when you can't sell your product to the EU market without imposing their onerous regulations, 100% of which are applied to small businesses in the UK, like the salmon griller in um, London who sold fish and had to put a thing, thing on his packaging saying contains fish to comply with EU regulations, almost put him out of business. Those are the people who are affected by this, and this stinks to high heaven. Absolutely. Paul, stay there. Jakari, stay there. Five more minutes with both of you. And we have another special guest joining us. We're getting to the bottom of what just happened with this member of parliament. Jakari Jackson's riding shotgun with us for the rest of this and segment. So is Paul Watson. I, I was kind of ranting last, last segment, but...
Speaking of free speech, they're trying to ban our free speech uh, and say you can't have a Trump rally. And so we've got the organizers of that joining us to talk about that in the next segment. And that ties into all this. Uh, you know, Mahatma Gandhi's March to the Sea, that was successful against the British being nonviolent, but they stopped paying the salt tax and other things. So there's got to be some noncompliance. And, Paul, where does this go if the British exiting the EU, the Brexit, fails? Or do you think that they'll cheat? I mean, what are the tea leaves saying? Well, the polls over the past week have been, you know, pro-leave. They've swung the opposite way. At one point, they swung 13 points the other way. There's a poll out today where vote leave is four points ahead. So they differ, but they're all in favor of vote leave compared to a, a month or so ago, six weeks ago, when they were all in favor of vote remain. actually go out and vote because they're psychologically averse to change that's what the establishment relies on people freaking out and not voting for change when it actually counts. do you think scotland really voted to stay in well it was very close and there were sh some shenanigans with that but what's even more concerning is mps are people noises to the fact that even if the british people vote to leave europe they will ignore the vote, like the EU has done in many different countries, and they will simply say, Let's debate whether we want to leave in Parliament. And, and then have another vote, actually... another vote, another vote, just like Ireland. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it, it's just incredible. W what does your gut tell you about next week? Uh, that they will exit or they won't exit? Um, I'm more hopeful over the past week because the polls are showing that um, vote leave is, is pulling ahead, but... You know, I, I think they'll pull something. I think they'll pull another stunt. Even though now it's just come out that this killer had, quote, no political views. He said nothing about the EU referendum. Doesn't matter to the left. They will still frame everybody in this same extremist They camp. will still just say it. Well, uh, how yeah. do you get a gun when it, it, it's nearly impossible to get one there? managed to get one so those gun control laws didn't work because criminals don't obey laws. Surprise, surprise. That's right. But, you know, I'm... I'm more hopeful than I was a month ago about Brexit. Let's just put it that way. We've got the momentum. If we continue to carry that forward, it's, it's going to be a vote leave. Absolutely. Paul, you're going to be hosting some coming up next week. So let's check your Skype. It's having some hiccups. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Skype's great, but I tell you, it's got some problems. Jakar, we got two minutes left. Other thoughts just about this election, where the world's going right now. Well, when we look at the person who just got killed today, and it also reminds me of the person who got killed, I can't remember if it was earlier this week or last week, uh, the policeman and his wife who got stabbed overseas. and France. Yeah, in France. And these things make international news when it's some big politician or a police officer, but these things happen every single day. But they won't tell you about some housewife who got stabbed to death or, you know, some kid uh, at a bus stop, you know, who got slashed or stabbed. They only want to tell you about, you know, when uh, it's big, sensational, it's the AR-15, it's something that we can blame. That's when it's a news story. Just like this alligator eating this kid. I mean, it's sad, but is it the biggest story in the world? No, it's sensational. And so they can, it's they very, decide. It's very unique. It's very unique in that. It's regard. unique. It's not going to be unique soon if they don't start killing some alligators. But those things are all over the place now. I saw one cross the highway in South Texas. My son went out and killed three of them two years ago. Oh, yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. You can get uh, alligator hunting licenses now. He killed a uh, biggest one was 11 feet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when we just continue to look at all these things and how they continue to blame people, as Paul was saying, they'll blame a group that had nothing to do with a particular incident, but now it's their fault. And I was talking to somebody at the event, they don't want to talk on camera, but uh, in Atlanta, she was anti-Trump because she said Trump was politicizing or taking advantage of the Orlando shooting to push forward agenda. And I said, it took Hillary 10 minutes to come out and blame gun owners. Like, what are you saying? That's a complete double standard you know so you have to look at these things very objectively and see that these political uh, politicos are going to take advantage of the situation regardless of what it is they are well great job in atlanta we've got our reporters who'd we send up to dallas i believe it was biggs and kit biggs and kit that should be interesting they're on their way up to the trump rally seven o'clock tonight it kicks off they'll have live feeds before that in the nightly news seven o'clock central who's hosting the news tonight leanne mcadoo leanne mcadoo thank you jakari jackson we'll thank be you. back Tim Salady is going to be our guest at the bottom of the hour. He's an avid conservative grassroots activist. His current mission is uh, reviving his fellow citizens' passion for American patriotism. And he heads up AmericaFirstMovement.com that Roger Stone and, and, and some of the Trump folks, everybody says, is really one of the best organizations out there. And they've organized in Cleveland 
first stop the steel demonstration, but now that they backed off that, at least on the surface, they're still going to try it. Watch. Uh, having folks come out and just demonstrate with the First Amendment and support uh, of the electoral process is just a free speech rally slash victory rally. The DNC is going to be having those. Oh, but Cleveland's trying to restrict the time and put people miles away. The ACLU has come out and said, this is onerous, this is wrong. And they want folks to sign on who are going to be part of a lawsuit. And, and uh, they've asked me to be part of that. I'm certainly happy to be a plaintiff in that. I intend to be there. It's a rally that I started organizing you know, six months ago with Roger Stone. Uh, so Tim is working on that. After he leaves us, I'm going to get into the latest on Russia, says it might now, or NATO says it might now have grounds to attack Russia. Uh, we've got more publications coming out saying repeal the Second Amendment, not just Rolling Stone. Uh, we have hackers release secret Clinton docs from State Department, DNC's Trump opposition file donor list. We have uh, just a lot of really important news we're going to be getting to Trump may launch his own cable network to counter all this. Well, you know, they're going to try to send in the Federal Elections Commission and claim that that's political speech and you can't have it. Uh, but I say under free speech, let them have it. I mean, the globalists, all these foreign interests own media and sit here and bombard us with political news. They just claim it isn't. I say free for all. Uh, we got the Saudis and the communist Chinese funding Hillary. I mean, give me a break. He can have a cable network. Uh, here's the article we wrote. Cleveland to ban Trump supporters outside RNC. Democratic uh, city fueling anti-Trump protests to make Hillary look good. Uh, and so, uh, Tim, thank you for joining us, citizensfortrump.com, patrioticwarriors.com. Uh, Tim, what do we need to do to make sure, I mean, obviously, everybody should just show up regardless, and, and, and I'm going to be there. I'm going to exercise my First Amendment. I mean, is that accurate? What should we do? Hey, hey, thanks for having me on, Alex. I appreciate it. You bet. So, yeah, I mean, again, we uh, first started out trying to have a rally of sorts to protest the RNC st uh, stealing uh, Mr. Trump's nomination. And after we seen that uh, wasn't going to happen, of course, we just wanted to have a celebratory parade and, uh, uh, and a rally. But uh, unfortunately, the city of Cleveland not only belayed our permits forever in a day, um, they also reissued new parameters, of course, as you know. Now, as of just a day or so ago, they have uh, approved a bunch of permits. Funny enough, ours isn't on that approval list. All of them are leftist or communist or anti-Trump groups. So we're still sitting here, even though we're the top plaintiff on the lawsuit against the city. They haven't even bothered to respond to me personally or the law team. So at this point, uh, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but you're right. A lot of people are still going to show up, but unfortunately, the city has made three convergent points that are very, uh, you know, are, I would say are, are a scenario for violence to happen. Well, Tim, it's just incredible. Uh, it's a First Amendment issue. I know the police are supportive. Yeah. And then the you're going to have the black, you're going to have the Black Lives Matter group, the communists, the Soros groups being able to do whatever they want. But here's the RNC. Trump's inside. People are trying to organize something outside. And they're saying, no, uh, I hope Trump gets involved in this, not just the lawsuit. But, but, but let's talk about the technicals, the history of this, the lawsuit, and where it's going. And, and I want to tell viewers and listeners, I'm going to be there even more now. I know as libertarians or conservatives or folks, we don't want to go just stir up trouble like a bunch of communists. But they're violating our rights, saying only communists can basically march in America. We have to take our free speech and our First Amendment back. Yes, that's absolutely right. And, you know, again, with them only approving uh, all the left wing, so to speak, or anti-Trump groups at this point, one, is adding a little bit more validity to our free speech being violated. And secondarily, again, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. You have to understand that these groups are coming not, you know, to peacefully protest. They're coming to protest in the same fashion they did in California, New Mexico, and, and a few other places. So we know that the city has taken out a massive insurance policy. And what does that mean? Well, you know, I love the police department and all, but what it does mean is that no matter what happens there, it's going to be covered under that uh, insurance policy. So, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm not saying that the police are going to conduct themselves in any less professional manner, but, you know, there is a big difference when you're personally responsible and liable for your conduct as opposed to being covered under a blanket insurance policy. Uh, but, but Well, there's a big that, problem here in that clearly they're saying we're going to let the leftists run around and do whatever they want, yeah. but, but we're not going to allow citizens out here that support Trump, who are the vast majority of people, obviously. So 
this is just incredible discrimination. Wow, they're arrogant. I didn't know about the new development that, that they've given the permits to all the Democrat groups, but but not to the pro-Trump group. That's crazy. No, not, you know, and again, we're the biggest, we had the biggest rally planned that, they, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the city had seen, you know, they even told me, well, it's unheard of to plan a, a celebratory rally of this size for a, you know, an RNC event like this. But but that said, it, I guess the point I was making earlier is that we can go and show up, but understand this, if we don't get a permit, all the leftists will have a permit. All of us who are pro-Trump, and you know, we represent several. No, no. Obviously, we want to get the permit to really have everybody together right. and show it. But if not, have Rolling Thunder in, take over the streets. We'll outnumber them five to one, and just and just 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 it, it'll be huge. Yes, and we probably will do so. But again, unfortunately for us, is that uh, the police will be on the side of the people with permits. If you if you follow what I'm saying. Absolutely. So we need to try to do this, but at the same time. That's their problem. If the city's corrupt and does that, we have to go ahead and go forward, as you said. I've been told the city won't arrest anybody for being in the street specifically. They won't enforce that. But, you know, that you know, remains to be seen. But at the end of the day, I know truckers for Trump, bikers for Trump, tea partiers, students, women for Trump. A lot of them people are still going to come. Uh, you know, I know Roger's going to be there. We're going to be there. Diamond and Silk, we're going to be reporting from inside, uh, you know, the convention as well. But... At the end of the day, we, you know, we, we're going to formulate a plan. We're going to see. We're going to give the city a couple more days to see if maybe they're trying to accommodate us, and that's to delay. But I've got a feeling that you're correct. They absolutely are going to try to make a mockery of us coming one and not allow us to be there legally too. Well, the good news is, as you know, Tim, they can claim that Trump people started the riot in Chicago. They can claim that Trump people did the stuff in Albuquerque or L.A. or wherever. All of it's bull. The Internet and real media is bigger than the corporate media, the establishment media. The lies don't work. And when it's going to come out that the Trump people weren't given their permits, they weren't given their place, they were told they could be on the other side of the moon in a free speech zone, and they're not putting up with it, and it's going to blow up in their face yet again. And then when the Trump people are calm and nice, and the anti-Trump people act like a bunch of idiots, it'll only blow up in their face that much better. I think the best thing Trump ever does is hang out in places like you know New, New Mexico, and California, where some of these crazy leftists are, just to show what, what morons they are. Well, exactly. And here's the other side of it. A lot of people would tell me, and, and I agree to a degree, you know, maybe we should tell everybody not to go so there is no bloodshed, so there is no issue. But uh, on the flip side of that is, uh, you know, again, uh, by I think you're right. If we outnumber them five to one, we've seen in the past where wherever they congregate Black Lives Matter or other anti-Trump or uh, racist groups like that, that when we outnumber them, like with bikers for Trump, they typically back down and run with their tail tucked shared. So there is that. Well, that's right. We have the numbers. We have the truth on our side and we have the First Amendment on our side. And so this is just another arrogant attempt. If we give into this, pretty soon we'll be banned everywhere. And, and, and then it's over. I mean, that's what they want. They want to come shut down the rallies. They want to stop Trump from speaking. They want to keep people from coming. It's not worked. So I say round of applause for the First Amendment and the American people standing up, and especially to all of the uh, black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and others that I've seen in many areas who are like 30, 40, 50 percent of the folks going in being yelled at and screamed at uh, by the anti-Trump people, you know, standing up to that type of bullying. I say bravo. Yeah, the abuse has been, I mean, unprecedented just because of our choice of candidate. And on top of that, you know, I find it very interesting and it's heartbreaking that an attack such as the one that just happened, uh, you know, is what it takes to bring, you know, the issue uh, forward. But, you know, we, we, we've got a problem, you know, with, uh, you know, a lot of different things. And Mr. Trump is right when it comes to vetting who's coming into this country. So, you know, again, attacks that happened uh, just the other day are going to continue to happen if, uh, you know, if we don't do something about it. Well, Tim, other angles to this, uh, obviously, if folks are on the East Coast or in the Midwest, you know, they're going to be pretty close to Cleveland. They need to be there. Uh, obviously, a lot of folks are worried about housing and things. Even if you stay 20 miles away and, you know, drive in and, and, and are there just at a few key events, you don't have to be there the, you know, the whole three or four days. It's important just to show up, just to document, not even to you know wear a Trump shirt, but to videotape and get this footage out so people can see exactly uh, the type of ignorant folks uh, that are against the F First Amendment. 
Yes. I mean, you know, again, if we don't show up there in the document, if we don't show up at least to give our free speech, you know, to stand up for our free speech, then, you know, we do ourselves a disservice. I mean, if we're patriotic warriors, then we need to stand up for that because, again, you're, you're right. Uh, you know, this could disappear on us pretty quick if we don't stand up for ourselves. And this is one of the reasons I joined on with the ACLU. And I thought that was an interesting fact that they wanted to sue the city. But, uh, you know, uh, again, we have to do something about it. If we don't, if we just lay down and we let the, you know, the other uh, agenda win, so to speak, the leftists, the Black Lives Matter people and all the other groups that are trying to, you know, trend what America thinks, so to speak, then we've we lost. we lost already. Timothy Saladi, am I pronouncing that right, sir? Yeah, Saladi. Saladi, okay. Uh, and that's citizensfortrump.com, citizensfortrump.com. Um, I want to ask you a question here at the break, and we may come back with you, but I, I've got one more question for you. Tim Saladi is our guest. He heads up citizensfortrump.com, also some of the biggest Tea Party sites in the country. And uh, comes highly recommended from Roger Stone. He's heading up Citizens for Trump. And uh, the, you know, the lawsuits are taking place right now. Uh, we're fighting for the First Amendment. In closing, any other points on how do people out there support what you're doing? Sure, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on. You bet. And uh, they, can, uh, they can come and support Mr. Trump in, in our efforts at citizensfortrump.com. Uh, go there, pledge your vote. We are going to hand deliver all the pledges uh, for votes for Mr. Trump to him personally. So come there, pledge your vote. Volunteer to help, and uh, we'll, we'll get you started and get you involved. So that's citizensfortrump.com. All right. Well, God bless you, and I appreciate you standing up for the First Amendment, Tim. Take care. Right. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate care. you as well, Tim. Speaking of Tim, we have a Tim Kennedy video. We're at the end of the show yesterday, the Special Forces soldier, UFC fighter. But the big thing is he's a patriot, anti-New World Order, and has great influence in the military and elsewhere for folks that aren't aware of what's happening. So that's why it's exciting to have him working with us as a correspondent uh, on all these great reports you're about to start seeing in the next few weeks. Uh, and we've already got five or six of them in the can. He's shooting more uh, this week and next week. But when we come back, I'm going to play this brief uh, clip where he talks about this piece that they put on the news uh, where they're saying, oh, my gosh, AR-15s, they kick so hard, they hurt you. They're so evil. Oh, my gosh, don't get one. I have PTSD from it. This is part of the anti-gun brainwashing the opposite of what we do, where we simply point out that you can go out and learn how to use a gun and that it's empowering. And that if you're, quote, a feminist, you should you know, want women to be equalized. When women do get attacked by men, or if you're a man attacked by a stronger man or a bunch of men, that, that, that the gun is a great equalizer. That is the most liberal thing I can imagine. We talk about liberal, it means more freedom, more defense, more security, more private property, more choices, more literature, more culture, more art. The opposite of what modern Orthodox Islam is. But they don't want us to defend ourselves, and they're blaming the Second Amendment all over the news, saying it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. That's all over newspapers from Rolling Stone to you name it today. It is mind-blowing. UCLA professor, Congress should secretly suspend Second Amendment. has a whole plan for that. Technocrats just say, start individually doing it. Put them on a no-buy list. No one will know we've banned it. Now, these folks mean business. <laughs> they mean business. Speaking of Tim Kennedy, uh, we are going to finance being able to have all these productions and, and helicopters and drones and just amazing things we're going to do uh, now with a shoestring budget. We can do some big things. We're financing that, selling products at InfoWarsLife.com, the nutraceuticals. And Tim Kennedy got the uh, anti-doping administration because he's known as being the cleanest guy in the UFC. All these guys that keeps you know, fighting are on roids. It keeps coming out. Uh, but uh, as part of a, a partnership with Special Forces Operator UFC fighter Tim Kennedy, we're giving you 15% off the top three selling InfoWars Life formulas that are used by Tim Kennedy. Get 50% off Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com right now for a limited time. These are the products that Tim Kennedy uses in his Special Forces and UFC training that help him go to the next level. All these products have hundreds of five-star reviews and contain the known herbs that help boost your body's healthy, natural activities. Now is the time to stock up. 
and get our top products for 50% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Visit InfoWarsLife.com and get on the Tim Kennedy InfoWars Life routine with Super Mel Vitality Brain Force Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. There's other great products there that are about to sell out like Living Defense Harmful Organism Cleansing System, 120 capsules of amazing concentrated known herbs and compounds that in a healthy, clean way go in and take out the bad organisms. It's got things like wormwood in it. Why is it called organic wormwood for thousands of years in ancient English? Because it's what's known itself to flush out the worms and parasites. That's one of 20-something plus ingredients in there that's sold out, ladies and gentlemen, for Six months because it's so hard to get all these ingredients and have them be organic and have them be up to California standards, which are basically meant to be almost impossible to pass so lawyers can sue everyone and make a bunch of money. But regardless, we, with all of our products, shoot for that. And we have one or two products that came in where we just cannot do it at that level. Uh, and so we're putting a note on there that it doesn't pass California standards and not selling it in California. That's not this one. That's uh, Ancient Defense because it's got like 60-something things in it. Just everything there is. And then just on one little level, there's something above California standards. So we won't sell it there. But, you know, that's just an example of how hellish this is. And while almost no companies have stuff that pass California standards. But it's back in for a limited time. I think it'll probably sell out this weekend, even though I put it back to the regular price. InfoWarsLife.com, your purchase makes everything we do here possible. Big news, what's coming up? We're Stay with us. March. I have talked a lot about how, back when I had time, I would take liberals, as painful as it is, out shooting. And my father, growing up, I remember he would take liberal friends of his that were newspaper editors and writers and people like that out to our East Texas ranch, and they would be phobic of a shotgun and be all scared and act all neurotic and mentally ill. They would be completely scared of bugs, they would be completely scared of spiders. These are domesticated people that usually lived lock and key. Uh, daddy usually wasn't home. They're usually nice intellectuals. They're friendly people, but they're emasculated. And within about an hour of pulling out shotguns and rifles and, you know, shooting stuff, they would be laughing, saying, this is not scary. I don't know why I was ever so, you know, so afraid. And then my dad would say, well, you do need to know how to, you know, Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to pull the trigger and, you know, keep it, you know, aimed at the ground and, you know, never, you know, go through the safety things with people and, uh, you know, always unload the gun uh, when you're going to transport it, on and on and on. Just basic stuff. And I've gone out with Mike Judge and I've done this with the cast of Silicon Valley. I've done it with other folks. That when he's doing a movie or a TV show or production, he takes them to Austin, usually for South by Southwest or another event, takes them out to his ranch. We even have some footage of that somewhere. We never aired it. And uh, you, 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 he takes leftist out. He doesn't say, I'm deprogramming you. He just puts barbecue out and stuff. And he, he has some former military folks out there that know what they're doing. And, and we start getting women to shoot at, you know, M4s, AR-15s. And they go, this is that evil gun on the news. And we just go, go ahead and try it. And within an hour or so, the women are shooting bullseye at 100 to 200 yards. Because women, on average, are better shots than men. At the Olympic level, men a little bit more because they think men train harder. But just as novices, you take a woman versus a man, same age, and in an hour of training, women tend to be better shots. It's just, it's, it's a known fact. Unless they're just shooting some gun that has an incredible kick. And, and then they start going, well, I should be able to have a gun. I, I should be able to have this. I'm not bad. Absolutely. Wow. So what type should I get for self-defense and things like that? And I'm allowed to have one of these? I thought these are illegal. Because they have all these TV shows and movies where the cop pulls you over and it's based in New York, Chicago, or D.C. And they go, oh, you got a handgun. That's 20 years in prison. Because that will be some local state law they have. It's unconstitutional. So they don't even know that you're allowed to have guns. I mean, I remember just 15, 20 years ago, I had a carpet cleaner. That was about 16, 17 years ago. Carpet cleaner uh, crew at my house. And they went in my office, and there was, and I didn't have kids then either, and there was a gun rack that had a black Winchester, I think it was a Defender, like $300 pump shotgun. There was a deer rifle under it, but it was black. It was black. And he's like, I, I, I can't clean in here. Uh. And, and the assistant was the one that wasn't mentally ill, 
Because I'd actually worked for that steamer company a few years before. Because it paid pretty good, like $25 an hour. So you had the assistant and then the main person. But it was the main person, Stanley Steamer Carpet Cleaner. It was the main person that was freaking out going, I don't know. I, it's a gun. I don't know. And he goes, no, that's it. And so he goes out. He goes outside and ca starts calling his bosses. So I call him, and they go, yeah, let me give you the manager. And he goes, yeah, I'm on the other line with him right now. Hold on, such and such. Yes, we understand. Yes, we understand. No, he was going to call the police, but now he isn't. But we're just going to tell him to go. So they left my house because in Texas, in a little three-bedroom, blue-collar house, or upper blue collar, lower middle class. That's actually four bedroom. It had a bedroom upstairs. The point is, I tell these stories. I go back to the actual memories and start imaging and, you know, having a memory scan of exactly what went on. That's why I kind of bumble on stories sometimes because it's really what happened. And, but a gestalt of it because there's so much info. And I walked out there and I was like, is there loading up the thing? I said, man, I used to work here like four or five years ago. We go in houses all the time with guns and all sorts of stuff. Don't you go in houses with guns? And there was the Hispanic assistant. And he's like, man, he's crazy. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, no, I've only been working here a few weeks. It's weird. And then I went and told that story on Access Television the next night when I had my show. And the assistant called in and told the rest of the story how they had actually called the police but the police had told him that a shotgun wasn't illegal and didn't come. And that when he said this is wrong, they fired him. Not the guy that wouldn't clean my house. With one of the bedrooms turned into an office where I broadcast out of. Not because of that. No, they fired the, quote, assistant. Because he sat there and said this is crazy. So... That's what we're dealing with in this country. And they are programming people. They are controlling people. They are absolutely creating undue phobias and, and psychological, almost agoraphobic concern over seeing a fellow slave with a gun. And the essence of what I'm doing and what Tim Kennedy's doing and others are doing, whether it's gardening or whether it's learning how to camp or whether it's learning how to swim, a lot of folks don't know how to swim, or whether it's learning how to box or grapple, or learning how to clean a gun, or learning how to work on your car, becoming somewhat self-sufficient. And we're not up here on some high horse claiming we have all the answers, though Tim Kennedy is pretty much Superman across the board. We're just trying to make Americana and being human and being inventive and being adaptive and being involved fun again and not just watching tv and being a zombie that's why people are so unfulfilled every study shows people that are working hard involved doing lots of hobbies uh in their communities politically active live longer are happier develop new mental connections and neurons in the brain humanity is turning into a bunch of jellyfish and it's now time to realize we're going to fix the country and fix the world fixing ourselves one person at a time and again i'm not up here on some high horse I'm slowly becoming healthy again, slowly becoming, uh, you know, more inventive and more involved and getting back into guns because I'm so busy. I don't have a lot of time to go out and shoot guns or, you know, be proficient in that like I used to be. I mean, when I was 18, I could shoot to the same hole with a Remington 700 308 over and over again with a $300 scope, not even that fancy, at 200 yards. And I'd be out at these quasi police ranges where the cops are out shooting and I was out shooting the SWAT teams you name it I, I was in some of the police uh, c contest deals where you could have quote civilians involved but 40 percent 60 percent depending on the the event were uh, police sometimes 80 percent and they would get so upset when I'd go out there and go through those ranges with a pistol and things like that or handgun uh, and you know, be in the top 10 percentile out of 100 people competing. Well, that's not that good. Uh, but nowadays, I am horrible. I mean, 200 yards, I got a pattern that's like, depending on the windage and things like that, you know, maybe two inches. I mean, that is just terrible. Uh, I go out and try to shoot some dove or quail, miss half the time. I, I go out to the clay uh, shooting events and, you know, I might, I might miss... One out of five clay pigeons. 
I was 18, I, I would go an hour without missing one. It was just sickening. So the point is, is that I'm going to get back into all that myself as well. Without further ado, though, let's go to this piece where... Tim and I were talking about this yesterday, but we didn't have the video, so I thought I'd actually intersperse the video with little girls shooting two two threes, you know, shooting uh, M fours or five five six, depending on you know whether you're talking about NATO or civilian. Without getting into all the little numbers games, here's the video first of some little girls shooting um, the evil Bushmaster, the evil AR fifteen, the evil M four uh, that people claim is so dangerous and kicks so hard. Because the truth is, they know it doesn't kick, and it's perfect for women. It's perfect for everybody. So they can demonize that front line number one weapon. Then they can demonize them all and bring them all down, bring down all semi autos, and then later get your bolt actions and single shots as well. Uh, and, and then we play this New York Daily News reporter acting about how freaked out he is after he went into a gun range and shot a gun. But they don't even really show that because who knows if they even did it. Here it is. Nice shot, Abby. Right right to the right of the bullseye. Good shot, baby. You're hot. Finger off the trigger. How did that feel? Pretty good. Excellent. Okay, let's see it again. Good trigger discipline. Trigger off. Your radio listener, that was like a four-year-old clip. They're having to find it, so I'll play it later and put it together with you talking about it on the nightly news. But describe this clip. Uh, it's, it's, it's the embodiment, it's the personification of the neutering of what it means to be a man. So this guy goes and shoots an M4 at the range, and um, he has this catastrophic, nearly traumatic event while he's trying to shoot... An M4. It's two, two, three. This is what I let like my ten-year-olds shoot. Oh yeah. Video of a five-year-old or six-year-old shooting. It's, it's just a little bit bigger than a twenty. There's no kick. No, no kick at all. Not if you push it in your shoulder. Nothing. Nothing. So he shoots this gun a couple of times, and he's like the concussion, the gases, the smell of it all. It was so overwhelming. I was, I was, I had post-traumatic stress for hours after it. He's trying to create a phobia. Exactly. So people don't do it. I mean, I'm not the super soldier, but I sit there and fire a hundred rounds with a fifty cal handheld. Effortlessly. And then these guys are like can't shoot a two two three. But I don't know if they've been like actually emasculated or if they're just trying to demonstrate to the world how weak Americans are. I mean, it seems like it's intentional. He's like, no, 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 no. It's not cool to go and work hard and to go train and go shoot. It's better just to be like the biggest sissy on the planet that can't even shoot it. A two two three because it hurts my shoulder and the gases and seeing the brass fly out it's just it's traumatizing. Uh, I can't uh, take it. Well, that's like these social justice warriors that see the chalk on the ground and start freaking out and convulsing. <sighs> but not everybody's like that. How do you? What should the country do about gun owners or gun buyers who shouldn't have the guns? Tough question. The sheer firepower of those kind of weapons is absolutely awesome. Uh, my ears are still ringing and we had serious sound protection. Uh, it's a very dangerous weapon in the wrong hands, as Frank said, uh, and keeping it out of the wrong hands is the challenge. I mean, we have these incredibly domesticated morons of the New York Daily News just ninnying around, and then it doesn't show him even shoot on the video. It's just crazy. Yeah, what about guns in the wrong hands of a tyrannical government? What about that? By the way, as I mentioned earlier, we are running a special, 15% off the Tim Kennedy special on InfoWars Life products like Brain Force, Super Metal Vitality, and of course, Secret 12, Methylical Bottom, and Vitamin B12. And folks, you can look at the studies on Vitamin B12. Most people absorb almost none of it in their gut. If you do, it's 3, 4, 5% of your lucky. Under the tongue, you can get a lot more. Still not as good as injectable. But what this is, is the injectable, you know, level quality methylcobalamin that you put under your tongue with a dripper and then you absorb a lot more than you would uh, just taking it in to your stomach. Now, again, consult your physician before you take vitamin B12 organic under your tongue because it's so dangerous. And before you go outside or breathe air, I'm just going to, it does say that on the bottle. Uh, but uh, this is this is the same stuff that you get from a doctor that costs you 50 bucks because I've done it that you inject into your you know fat 
and it gives you a lot of energy and it's totally healthy. I've gone out and done it just to test and see. And quite frankly, the injectable of ethylcobalamin has a better effect than this under the tongue. Taking pills, I don't even feel it, doesn't even do anything. In, in, injecting it, whoa. You got to get a prescription for that. And I hate needles, but I, I do inject vitamin B12 a few days a week when I have the prescription. But it's the methylcobalamin, the same stuff. And it's like, this is sweet. Does this have sugar in it? No. That's how vitamin B12 tastes. Most of the stuff they have at the store is synthetic. It, do, it doesn't even get absorbed, period. It's totally fake, but the government lets them sell it. This is true, organic, vegan-derived methylcobalamin with another type of B12 that makes it absorb. 20% is the, forget how you pronounce it, acetophil cobalamin or whatever. The scientists have all explained it to me. All I know is I get a major, I don't give this to the kids in the afternoon or at night. You know, kids during the winter or whatever, or I want them to be healthy every day. Secret 12, secret 12, in the morning, in the morning. And it doesn't have caffeine or stimulants. The, the way my dad describes it is that it's, and he's a chemist and retired doctor, is, and he used to develop drugs for, some, for pharmaceutical companies, is that it's the precursor basically of everything. Vitamin B12, they think, is like the precursor of everything else. You've got to have it to develop your hormones, to build just everything. Then there's some other things that are precursors too, like water, oxygen, um, iodine. Iodine's the good halogen. All the others are bad. Your body will use the bad ones, the chlorine, the fluoride, the bromine, all the rest of it, unless you have the good halogen, and that is, of course, secret 12. That of, is, of course, the good halogen, X2, nascent iodine. You've got to have these in your body. You've absolutely got to have them, and just like we got to have freedom. And when you buy them at InfoWarsLife.com, you get the very best products that the absolute nutraceutical supplement freaks come up with. I mean, the soup Nazis love us. To use the Seinfeld joke. I don't mean literal Nazis, folks. I mean, you know, the guy that makes the very best soup is totally neurotic about it. He's called a soup Nazi. And now you call somebody that, you know, is, makes the very best Italian food. You know, this place is like a, you know, or Nazis about it being the best or whatever. That means totally obsessed, neurotic about the very best, highest, cleanest quality. Uh, it's not a good connotation, though, for Nazis, but you know what I mean. The neurotic third-party nutraceutical uh, uh, review sites just love us. They're like, why is this right-wing lunatic having the best stuff? Because we're not right-wing lunatics. We just want, we're against the geoengineering. We're against the, the leaking nuclear reactors. We're against the glyphosates. We're against the GMO. We've done the research. We know there's a lot of research that, quote, leftists have done that's real stuff. That's why we are confused that you're anti-gun when the statistics show you should be pro-gun. Or why you like Hillary when she's a fascist warmonger. Or, or, but again, those are pop liberals on the ground that are the super dumb social justice warriors. I know there's real liberals, a la, you know, the 60s or 70s that had some good points and were against the wars and against discrimination and really were against racism. But all of that's been hijacked and, and, and Madison Avenue and Wall Street have taken control of it and turned it into political weapons to get us all at each other's throats. That's what I'm getting at. I'm not plugging here. I'm just, I'm just going off into the generalities of it isn't about liberal or conservative, but people communicate with those terms. So yes, the modern liberal is a very anti-liberal, anti-free speech, anti-American weirdo group who I see as very threatening and bizarre, and who don't even care about their own interests and are allied with orthodox, which we call radical Islam. And so all I'm saying is I don't go to an art opening so I feel like I'm an intellectual to sit around and listen to myself talk to other trendies. I go to an art opening if I like who the artist is because I want to buy some of the art. See, I don't, I don't like culture and theater and things like that because I'm trying to act like I'm cultured. I'm a barbarian goblin, but I also love culture and art because I've got those areas in my life. I'm multifaceted. I'm not a stereotype, and neither should you be. See, Willie Nelson loved me, boy, when I used to bash Bush. And he had a he dislike me now. But that's an example of how perspectives work. I was against Bush because of warrantless surveillance and invading the wrong country and covering up 9-11 and being for the assault weapons ban. And I criticized him for all that. And liberals, whether it was Martin Sheen or whether it was Willie Nelson, 
They didn't care as long as I was bashing Bush. And I'd sit there and I'd have dinner with them and I'd say, I'm not a liberal. And they go, well, I know I'm not either. I like organic milk and I think vaccines are bad and GMOs bad. And we go out and go shooting out there. But then as soon as Obama comes in, it's like, why are you being so mean to Obama? And I'm like, well, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, you know? But because he's, quote, a liberal and because he's, quote, black, he gets all this political cover. We're in deep trouble. And now, finally, even the head of the Green Party's come out and said that, wow, Obama was worse than Bush, and so is Jonathan Turley and everybody else, because it's beyond that. These are just front people to get their agenda through. And so, if Donald Trump gets in and starts doing a bunch of bad stuff and, and doesn't, look, if he isn't just out to get the country and turns the economy on and doesn't screw people over, if he doesn't get a whole bunch of stuff done, other than that, I'll be happy. I don't even expect purity or something to be perfect. I just don't want foaming at the mouth globalists that are completely out to get us on every front. That's what I'm getting at. Now, before I go any further here, this is a big deal, and I'm going to shoot a special report about this for the nightly news tonight. I'm also going to shoot one for the show tomorrow because I didn't get to this enough, but I'm going to rock. I want to tailor this because this needs a lot of added research and data. Hacker releases secret Clinton docs from the State Department DNC Trump opposition file donor list. This is very interesting to see who's doing what and very, very powerful info. Uh, we're also going to be getting into uh, more of the wonders of Islam as the Taliban uses honey trap boys to kill Afghan police. When I talk about homosexuality being the highest in Islam and pedophilia for that matter, uh, I see comments going, Jones is crazy. They kill gays. Uh, no, I'm not the one that's crazy. They are. They're the ones, I had the former head of the State Department psych warfare on that got the Camp David Accords on saying this yesterday, okay? I already knew this, everybody knows this, that's researched it. But the public is so ignorant, they think I'm just talking Martian here. That's what I'm saying. Homosexuality is off the charts in Islam, look it up. Pedophilia is basically legal. But then if the imams or others in the Islamic group want to say that you are involved in homosexuality from a biblical perspective, then they can kill you. It's have your cake, eat it too. Okay? And that's what's going on, and it's a freak show. And as I said a thousand times, I'm not sitting here taking the blame for these mass shootings that jihadists are doing. I don't care what Hillary and Obama and everybody else sits there and does. It's just not happening. I'm done. Just like political correctness. I do not dislike people for what color they are. I dislike people for how they act and how they behave, including myself sometimes. Uh, but I'm just done. I'm 42 years old, and I was not brought up to be racist or hate anybody. In fact, I was bought up, uh, brought up to put up with too much crap. And I'm not doing it. So, and, and, and just everybody else out there, I suggest you just reject political correctness even more. And I think that's what Donald Trump is a manifestation of. So I salute Donald Trump. Leanne McAdoo uh, is doing the nightly news this evening, I'm told. Uh, and uh, coming up uh, in the next hour, we're going to have one of our other anchors coming in, but I'm going to do five more minutes. Some stations don't carry it. Infowars.com forward slash show. Don't forget, we got the 15% off Tim Kennedy special at Infowarslife.com. We are back live. Rob Dew is coming up to take over in the next segment. You got the Democrats with uh, anti Democrats end gun control filibuster for 15 hours. You got that going on. Why it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. Rolling Stone. I got like 100 articles I haven't covered, but I just can't get over them openly calling to repeal it. I mean, they keep promising they don't want our guns. Drudge, the DHS secretary, give up your guns first. You go first, bra. FBI, U.S. homicide rate at 50-year low. Yep, that's true. Homicide rates at the 50-year low, but believe me, people all over the country, when their kids are swimming are looking for alligators right now because it's rare, it's scary, and it, it gets your instincts, you see. And having somebody come and shoot you, having a human come kill you, that's in our instincts too. We're afraid of it. That's why you can have like a cat in your house and have one of those fake plastic snakes and throw it down and that cat will jump three feet in the air and get back in an you know, attack position. And your cat may have never seen a snake its whole life. It's got instinct, and they're just punching our buttons all day long, and so am I. I'm coming in here with my own instincts that we're being overrun with tyranny. We're seeing all sorts of evil be set up, and I am here ringing the alarm saying, you ought to be scared of tyranny. Democide in the last 100 years killed over 200 million people, and that's death by government. 
That's non-military deaths. 200, what is it, 262 million? That number's like a decade old. University of Hawaii at Honolulu. Man. But I tell you, I'm also going to have a message to Donald Trump today. Donald Trump to talk with NRA about denying Second Amendment to people on terror watch list. And, and, and you read his tweet. I don't know exactly what to make of it. Because he sounds like he's going to talk to them about doing that. And that just denies due process and is very, very dangerous. So this will be the first time I've got a real issue with Donald Trump other than him not understanding or not getting or not fully comprehending or maybe being wrong on the uh, whole Apple thing. Hey, give the FBI the code. They've got a warrant. Yeah, I get it. Give them the code. They've got a warrant to the San Bernardino shooter. That makes sense, doesn't it? Except there isn't one code. It's the keys to everybody's iPhone. And they could get through it. They don't need to say they're getting through that encryption. You get through it with the wire that goes in, and you can get into that in a few minutes with, with any good hacker. You know, the plug-in to give it power. That's an electronic interface with the phone. And you've got all the apps. Most of them have Trojan horses built in. You just call the company's administrators. They'll give it to you. And the FBI has all that. It was all red herring. It was all bull. But do I throw Donald Trump out because of that? No. He's killing political correctness. He's going up against globalism. He's exposing that our government's been funding ISIS. He's exposing the crooked corruption of the Democratic and Republican parties. He has not been taking political money up until now. Now he's in the general election. He pretty much has to. Like saying, well, oxygen is corrupt. Well, you, when you're in space, you need it. Well, he's going to get the oxygen from corrupt people. Well, they're the ones that got the money. Again, still, trust but verify. we got to stay very close to the situation and watch it. But I'm going to be going over all of that today. And I'm also going to follow a report on this because I didn't get to this properly. You know, Rob Dew really should because this is a big deal. It's up on Infowars.com. On Tuesday, June 14th, NATO announced that if a NATO member country becomes the victim of a cyber attack by persons in the non-NATO countries, such as Russia or China, then NATO's Article 5 collective defense provision requires each NATO member country to join that NATO member country if it decides to strike back against the attacking country. The paramilitary decision for this was made two years ago after Crimea abandoned Ukraine and rejoined Russia, of which has been part of unilaterally involved transformation to Ukraine by the Soviet dictator Nikita Khrushchev in 1954. The NATO decision was made in anticipation of Ukraine's ultimately becoming a NATO member country, which still hasn't happened. However, only now is NATO declaring cyber war itself to be included as a real war under the NATO Treaty Collective Defense Provision. And they go on to say they may militarily strike countries that are involved in that. Folks, can you imagine? A, you can't prove who did it. It's perfect for frame-ups. And then B, it starts a wider war when you do it. It's just crazy. Welcome to the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew, from the uh, Situation Room in the Central Texas Command Center. We are live right now. If you're not getting the fourth hour at your radio station or uh, television station even, call them up. Tell them, hey, carry that fourth hour because we always go over more news, more phone calls. We're trying to make the fourth hour great again. I've got a lot of gun news. We even got some exclusive uh, news from a Don Salazar out of Houston as a result of this uh, gay nightclub shooting. We're going to get into a little bit about a professor who... Uh, Traveled the world and says socialism doesn't work. And usually you see professors preaching socialism. And also calls, it looks like a, there's a Craigslist ad for a threat of an Orlando-style massacre in San Diego. But first, I want to get to, and, and I'm going to have David Knight come in at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about the concept of what would Jesus do at the gay bar shooting. Because there's lots of calls from both sides of the religious spectrum. Islam and even the hard, um, I guess, evangelical right. I'm not even sure if that's the correct term for it, but how they've come out and kind of attacked or uh, I guess celebrated what has gone on. We're going to talk about why that's not needed and why reaching out to people with an open hand is always going to yield you better results than uh, trying to be abrasive and dis and uh, and and uh, confrontational. But here we go. Here's the first tweet I want to read from Stefan Molyneux. If you are for gun control, then you are ag not against guns because the guns will be needed to disarm people. So it's not that you're anti-gun. You'll need the police's guns to take away other people's guns. So you're very pro-gun. You just believe that only the government, which is, of course, so reliable and honest, moral, and virtuous, 
should be allowed to have guns. So there, there is no such thing as gun control. There is only centralizing gun ownership in the hands of a small political elite and their minions. Right on the dot right there. Right on the dot. He's got it. He understands where this argument comes from. And while the left can't understand that there's always going to be one side with guns. And even when the government, which has been caught shipping guns to Mexico, uh, they're going to still, criminals are always going to be getting guns. Look at Chicago. Most gun control laws, highest gun murder rate. And here's the next one I, I tweeted out. This is from uh, Heavy Metal Patriot. Legal gun owners have over 200 million guns and 12 trillion rounds of ammo. I misspoke yesterday when I brought that up talking to Alex uh, as we went into the fourth hour. Seriously, people, if we were a problem, you would know it. That's right, because honest, real gun owners aren't going to go out and shoot people. They're going to protect themselves. They're going to teach their kids how to shoot. They're going to go hunting. But mainly, it's there for self-defense and against a tyrannical government, which is why we have... It's not perfect, people, but it's the best system in the world. And that's why you have people uh, building rafts out of garbage to get here. And they're doing the same thing getting to Europe because where they're coming from is even worse. So let's go to this article. This is uh, Don Salazar, and this is exclusive to InfoWars. Gun range selling out free concealed handgun courses for LGBT. Company has opened several classes since announcing the offer. And this is uh, the owners of the Shiloh gun range on the outskirts of Houston. We've got our reporters going there tomorrow after they hit this Dallas Trump rally to go interview the owners of the Shiloh gun range. So we're going to make that happen. And uh, due to the overwhelming demand of the sh uh, at Shiloh shooting, we'll be offering additional classes. Please call us, they said in a recent Facebook post, as we can't access our voicemail due to the volume of calls and our email server has crashed due to the number of emails. We've been inundated with phone calls ever since the news went out. And uh, Shiloh manager Jeff Stanford, Sanford says, this offer not stems from a marketing standpoint, but from the desire to rally more people behind the Second Amendment. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time. To rally more people behind the Second Amendment. If you care about the Second Amendment, you should be celebrating this and should be telling other people in your area about it. This is an effort to reach out to a very small but vocal and passionate community that can be positive advocates for the, uh, of the Second Amendment for us. And if people don't agree with that, then they're absolutely wrong and they're not an advocate that they think they are. So he's saying reach out with an open hand instead of a closed fist. And that's what we have to do because what they're doing now, it's all a part of divide and conquer. It's to get Americans fighting with each other. And the reason we have this country is so people of all walks of life can come together and build a society. We may not agree with everything that each other does, and that is our right to not agree with it. And it's also our right to speak out against it. But it's not our right to go out and physically harm people or call for the harming of others in that. So I'm going to have David Knight talking about that later on. But that was exclusive to InfoWars, and that's in a Don Salazar article. Meanwhile, we have this uh, Craigslist ad. Oh, before we get to that, let me give out the call-in number. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I'll be taking your calls, especially when David's on, to talk about this issue because uh, I think it's a really important issue that we're not, uh, we're not addressing a lot. And I like the way this gun owner is handling it by offering free gun classes to people. So maybe the next time a shooter goes to a bar and starts shooting it up, or any place where people are, he will be responded back in force by other people. Notice it didn't happen in Texas. And notice the last time it did happen in Texas, the guys were taken out before they could get too far from their car. That's because people in Texas are armed, and you may not know it. You walk around the office here, there's a lot of people armed, and we are not afraid. So an armed population is a safe and, uh, and very polite population as well. So here we go. Craigslist ad threatens Orlando-style massacre in San Diego. Police are investigating the online threat of violence to San Diego's LGBT community. That reads your next. On Tuesday evening, a ABC 10 News viewer saw the post in the Men Seeking Men section of the Craigslist San Diego personal ads. He took a screenshot and sent it before the post was flagged and removed. The post was titled, We Need More Orlandos. And it's accompanied by a photo of a hand firing a revolver with a bullet coming out of the barrel. The post reads, Orlando was long overdue. Cleanse your community of felt that gives decent gay men and women a bad name. These people were walking disease, bug chasers, and thank God for AIDS and 9-11 and now Orlando. San Diego, you're next. And guess what? A lot of gun control in San Diego, in California. It's hard to get guns there. 
It's hard to keep them, and you can't get them very fast. So, of course, that's where you're going to see those types of attacks. You're going to see them in schools, in bars, places where guns are not allowed. Meanwhile, we have our reporters heading up to Dallas today. Dallas police practice riot control ahead of Donald Trump visit. Dallas police staged demonstration and riot drills at, uh, Wednesday at Fair Park. The day before, large demonstrations are planned against presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. About 600 Dallas police officers participated in, in the training with riot helmets and shields. There was smoke to simulate tear gas and scores of police recruits playing the role of unruly demonstrators. Uh, hopefully they weren't acting uh, and saying stuff like, oh, we're sovereign citizens. You can't do that to us, which we've seen in the past w with our military uh, because that's who our military is practicing to go after, or at least Homeland Security uh, controlled military to go after people who say they're sovereign citizens, not against people who say, um, you know, they're Islamist radicals because you can't say that in the military. And uh, here is this article, former CIA head, not the one I chased through the streets of Dresden, but uh, it was General retired General Michael Hayden made the point that the national security strategy is being hindered because there's now a hesitance to pursue some cases for fear of being branded a bigot. Is it possible that people are being politically correct? He asked Jake Tapper. And it's interesting, uh, Jake Tapper put out a series of tweets where he is actually questioning radical Islam in its role. He's not fully pulling the line of CNN, not blaming Islam at all and just saying, well, it's guns problem. He's actually taking the role of looking at who's actually shooting the gun instead of blaming the gun itself as an inanimate object. Uh, once again, our call-in number is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. If you want to get in on this conversation and talk about uh, gun gun rights in this country, I think they're too restrictive already. Mo people are coming out of the woodwork saying we have to restrict them. We saw the piece earlier with the uh, New York Post writer that Alex played where he was afraid and he had PTSD. You know, notice he didn't say that on video, but he put it in writing later. He was trying to figure out how he could couch his fear into a, a more uh, a, a more vivid approach of how to explain how guns are scary. And we, of course, we counter that showing kids shooting AR-15s, having no problem and actually liking it. The one kid said, how'd you, he goes, how'd you feel? He goes, pretty good. And he went back and shot a few more rounds off. We showed little girls shooting the AR-15. Of course, you had Joe Biden coming out a few years ago saying, buy a shotgun. And we countered that with uh, videos of women shooting shotguns and falling on their rears because a 12-gauge shotgun does give a big kick. But an AR-15 is a really great gun to shoot. And it's very easy to shoot. I've shot many of them. And they are hunting rifles for those of you out there on uh, Facebook who say, oh, no, we don't We don't need, no, those aren't hunting rifles. Yeah, they are. Go hog hunting with them. You'll be happy you had one. So back to the general. He says, you look at the Fort Hood case when the Army knew Nadal Hassan had become an extremist and he'd been talking to Anwar al-Awlaki. Incidentally, Anwar al-Awlaki went to a dinner at the Pentagon right after 9-11. So he's probably got some CIA ties there. Is there any hesitant, uh, hesitance to be branded a bigot? And then he also brings up Farouk abdul Matalib, who was the failed underwear bomber. Interestingly enough, he was given a bomb that could not work. And I had an argument with the TSA officer when, when I was going to um, Dresden, Germany, as we were getting felt up in the Austin airport. He was saying, well, we need these body scanners because the underwear bomber. I go, do you know he's given a bomb that couldn't work? Do you know the FBI knew who he was? Do you know his father had contacted him? Did you know that the uh, Undersecretary of State Patrick Kennedy came out on video later and said, we knew who this guy was and we wanted to follow him. We were letting him go through his mission and... Uh, because we wanted to see who he was working with. And then you had lawyer Kurt Haskell come out and come on our show in the beginning and say, hey, this guy was put on this plane by a well-dressed man who spoke perfect English, uh, was an Indian, but spoke in an English accent and brought the guy up and said, hey, he doesn't have a passport, but we do this all the time. How does that happen? Okay, but they use these events and you see he's using this event again, but for a different uh, standpoint. But they use that event when it first came out to say, We've got to go after uh, people getting on planes and we have to have these underwear bombs because or have to have these body scanners because only they could pick up this bomb, which, of course, is a lie because we've seen how you could fail it with a sewing kit from a dollar store. We've proven it all. The government's lying over and over again. We'll be back with more and your calls coming up. It's the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Thanks for watching. Infowars.com forward slash show for the live video feed. Well, this is very precariat as you join us back into the fourth hour. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Just saw this on Twitter. 
School brands third grader with I need lunch money stamp. So I guess he came, he went to school without the lunch money. And instead of sending the child home with a piece of paper, they stamp the child. Talk about, uh, is this a form of bullying and shaming the kids? Somebody asked, this happened in uh, Alabama, I believe. Yeah, Gardendale, Alabama. And this is all part of the, uh, I guess, the precariat class, the class that is like just one, they have jobs, they're employed, but they're one step away from uh, losing it all and then losing it, as Gerald Salente says. And that was one of the topics of Bilderberg was what to do with the precariat class. And we did an interview. In fact, I don't even know if I put that interview out. It was with infokrieg.com, and I need to actually put that uh, interview out because he broke down why they're talking about the precariat class, not because they care about the poor people, but because they want to set up a system where they're getting these monthly stipends. And in order to get these monthly stipends, you have to maintain the government code of conduct, and that's what they'll be setting up, and they'll have little minders and enforcers making sure people are uh, following what they're saying in order to get their monthly stipend because it's hard to live you know, in a place where you're taxed to the hilt and everything's got an extra fee on it and food's expensive and anything nice is really, really expensive in Europe. I noticed that um, what, right off the bat. But uh, let's go to Cindy in Pennsylvania. I've got other callers too. Robert uh, in Alabama, Scott in Illinois, James in Colorado, Curtis in Michigan. I'm going to get to all of you guys. But Cindy in Pennsylvania wants to talk about Bilderberg and gun control. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, hi Rob. Can I make two quick points? Sure, go ahead. Have you ever noticed have you ever noticed when Bilderberg meets, there's always a big shoe that drops. And the big shoe that dropped was Orlando, Florida. I would think that they were talking gun control as being their next move and making it a big move, which they did, and they probably have sleeper cells everywhere just waiting for them to make a call. And I also wanted to mention this Milo Giannopoulos. He was taken off of Twitter. He had, what, 30 million followers? I never heard of him before, but yesterday he was um, on Drudge. They gave the link to him, and I watched him talk in Orlando. He's very articulate, smart. He's with the LGBT community. 30 million followers, they listen to him. He's pro-Second Amendment. Um, he, he, he knows gay bars are soft kill, you know, kill zones, and I think it'd be a good idea to maybe interview him sometime and bring in these 30 million people. I mean, they buy products, too. That's a lot of people. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think he's followed exclusively by LGBT people. He's also followed by people who have a distaste in their mouth for the social justice warriors out there. And I think that's probably his biggest audience um, because he actually comes out against a lot of what the uh, LGBT says in terms of um, exclusivity and trying to shut people down in their freedom of speech. He's very pro freedom of speech. And um, I, um, we haven't had him on the show before, but we did have Joe Biggs going to California to follow a few of his speeches. And one actually got shut down due to a bomb threat that happened. And uh, so people don't like this guy speaking out. They're very uh, anti-freedom of speech when it comes to not following their views. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm sure we'd love to have him on on the show. And I think we've reached out to him. Alex uh, regularly speaks to one of the main editors of Breitbart. And that's who he works for. He's a tech editor at Breitbart. But as for Bilderberg and False Flags, that's what I thought. We were at the airport that morning chasing the Bilderbergers around, asking them questions. And uh, it was Josh Owen saw the, the uh, headline. He goes, oh, my God, 20 people were just shot in Orlando. And I said, wow, this is going to take all the, uh, the take the eye of what people are looking at, especially the eye of Drudge, as I say, from uh, Bilderberg, which he was covering every day, and then shift it over to this shooting and kind of take people off their real controllers, but into an event where you could have CNN and other mainstream media outlets come out and say, oh, we got to call for guns. We got to call for the banning of guns. And this, of course, gives President Obama the chance to get up on screen and, and do his fake tears and say he's he's sick and tired of this, And it, but he won't say the words radical Islam, even though the last two big shootings were radical Islam. So I, I would agree to you on uh, both points, Cindy. Thanks for calling in. Let's go now to who's been waiting the longest. Uh, looks like everybody pretty much the same. Curtis in Michigan wants to talk about gun control. Curtis, are you a gun owner yourself? Um, I'm not a gun owner yet. I am looking into getting a gun. Um, but my main points are, I'll keep it short, uh, gun control never works 
just like the drug war, uh, the black market, um, you know, that's always going to exist. And if you, if you want to shoot up a nightclub or a mall or whatever, um, they're going to find a gun. And getting it legally is irrelevant. When you're I thinking, would agree. Uh, hey, hang on tight. I'm going to hold you over the break. We'll come back with you and let you finish your point. Rob Dew with the fourth hour. Infowars.com forward slash show for the free streams. All right, so sitting over to my left, David Knight. I wasn't sure if I was live at that point. Usually they pop in and say, you're live. Um, but the liner had finished, so I just automatically went into it. <laughs> but uh, It's live. We're live. It's, uh, it's right. I got David Knight over to my left. We're going to talk about uh, kind of what you and Leanne uh, talked about a little bit last night. What would um, Jesus do at the gay bar shooting, a lesson in religious extremism. And uh, But I'm going to let Curtis, before that, finish up with his gun control remarks. He already said, you know, look at the drug war. It doesn't work. Uh, we still have drugs. You can still buy drugs. I could go to 20 different places in Austin right now and get whatever I want. And the government outlaws it and it doesn't matter. So when they outlaw guns, the same thing will happen. And is that how you want it? Right now, it is sort of controlled. I, I almost wouldn't mind a black market because then the government wouldn't know if I have a gun. But, you know, right now they do a background check and the government knows, hey, this person did a background check. We got to put them on a list. My son said the only good thing about so, gun control, gun prohibition is going to be you're going to see all kinds of really interesting guns created. Oh, yeah. You never even dreamed of, just like you saw all kinds of interesting, new and very, very dangerous drugs created from drug prohibition. They talk about, hey, it's too easy to get it. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of like buying drugs at a school playground. You can do that after 45 years of drug prohibition. And of course, nothing's going to change with guns. There you go. Now, hey, Curtis, I'm going to let you finish up go ahead uh yep i mean david knight's completely right uh you know the prohibition of lsd and stuff like that i'm not uh, advocating for that but you know there's much more dangerous designer drugs that are much like it now and they're very dangerous you know um but with my point you know they take away freedom little by little to get people compliant and docile and for people who say that the only way to stop these shootings is for gun control i would respectfully disagree um, I believe to stop these shootings, everybody just needs to be armed. If you want to protect yourself, you need to take the measures to protect yourself. Um, and that's all I got. You guys do a wonderful job. I'm taking my super mail. Um, everybody buy the products. They're good stuff. Uh, thanks for taking my call. All right. Thank you, Curtis. And I, I would advocate for you to go out and, and uh, learn how to fire safely and get yourself a gun because you have to do that in this day and age. It's been proven there's too many crazy people out there that yeah. don't like the fact that uh, other you know, Rob, people, have, they have different opinions. You know, so. Rob, I, to me, I look at this and I, I find the watch lists far more dangerous than the guns, okay? Watch lists are something that we've never had in America. Guns are something we always have had in America. And, the, and we've done pretty good by having guns in that's America. That's right, but we're not doing too good with these secret watch lists. Right. It, it perverts the entire Bill of Rights, and it, it really causes me to concern to see the NRA as well as Donald Trump start to talk about this because that is the narrative of Obama and the gun controllers from the left for this. Well, hopefully when he meets with them, they go, sir, that's not a good move because we don't even know how you get on the, these watch lists or how you get off of them. It's no, there's no due process. It's a government lackey saying, we don't like you. Remember, we had a guy on the show who flew out of the country and then couldn't right. fly back in because he had gotten mistakenly put on one of these lists. First story I covered. Yeah. He was somebody like this Orlando shooter. He had been vetted many, many different ways. He never had done anything, and there was no reason for him to be on it. But here's the thing, Rob. When we talked to him, he said, I never knew I was on it until they pulled me off the plane in Hawaii and said, you yeah. can't fly. And it's like, now I'm stuck in Hawaii. I can't fly anywhere. Okay, but he didn't know that he was on the list. He didn't know why he was on the list. He didn't know how he could get off the list. Where do I go to clear my name? Yeah. You don't. Sounds like 1984. Exactly. Sounds like 1984. We've shown clips of little kids being on the watch list. I put one of those clips in uh, Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. There was a little kid. It was during the Underwear Bomber segment. A little kid who was in, ended up on the no-fly list. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't work. It's, it's done by the government. It's not going to work right. That's watch one thing list. you can rest assured. The watch lists are far more dangerous. We need watch list control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We need watch list extermination. We need government control. Yeah. We need less exactly. government. Government is the problem, and it always will be. Okay, government's not out there fixing your roads or making your electricity bills cheaper. They're making everything more expensive. They're making everything more bureaucratic. They're making everything slower. When I, when I was in Europe, so many times, just do you have this paper? Do you have this paper? Do you have this paper? It was ridiculous. I I was trying to pay. We went and shot this amazing interview at this church in uh in uh the czech republic and just to pay them the money to do this took 45 minutes of talking back and forth 
<laughs> I was amazed. I'm like, geez, do you guys want the money or not? I'm ready to go. I don't want to sit here and have this conversation. Well, what are you paying it for? I'm paying it to go shoot the video. And then they went back and <laughs> forth because the director didn't speak English, but it's just bureaucracy in action, and you're mm -hmm. seeing it there, and it's just amazing. But, David, let's get into what would Jesus do at the gay bar shooting, which just happened in Orlando. So you uh, had this interesting concept, and it's basically the Muslims seem to be for it. They seem to be going, kill gays, kill gays. And now we have this extreme uh, religious right who's also seemed to be celebrating these killings. which And I I've never seen that before, and that's yeah. something that really concerned me. And, you know, we put this, I put this title up. You know, a lot of Christians see the WWJD brand of stuff at the Christian bookstores, okay, mm -hmm. especially Baptist bookstores. You get little bracelets that say, what would Jesus do? You know, and think about what you're doing. Would Jesus be doing this? That, that type of thing. And so I said, you know, well, what would Jesus do at a gay bar shooting? Okay, would he join in and, and hey, give me a gun, I want to shoot some gays? Or would he have sacrificed himself for them? Okay, and amazingly, I saw some comments from people saying, Jesus wouldn't even be at a gay bar. It's like, no, one of the things that he was attacked for during his life was the fact that he hung out with sinners. He hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes and uh, people. Why? Because you know what? He was making the point. He came to this earth to save sinners. He did, and that's what Christianity is about. It's not about telling us that we need to kill people because they're sinners. It's about telling people that Jesus died because you're a sinner. It's about offering a message of hope, a message of freedom, not a message of legalism. And so, yeah, I've heard some legalistic pastors before, and I've been to some legalistic churches before, but I've not seen this type of thing. And so last night we were talking about it. Leanne was um, talking about it from the Islamic side. She gave me this article today. A gay Muslim says, hey, you know what? Islam is not a religion of peace. He says calling Islam a religion of peace is dangerous. It's reductive. Like the other two monotheisms that precede it, it has blood on its hands. Well, let me say this, okay? It isn't, this is not just a function of monotheisms. It's a function of all religions, okay? Polytheists were sacrificing children, doing blood sacrifices of children. We've had atheists who have gone out of their way to murder people. People, especially believers, but also other atheists. Whether you believe in God or whether you're not, there's every kind of culture, every kind of religion has got blood on it. It's a hands. function of taking an ideology and twisting it and then saying, hey, it's okay to kill people now. That's right. That's what it is. It's and, people doing this. Once says, again, once again, it's people doing it, not the guns, not the religion. No. Exactly. They may be doing it in the name of religion, but that's not necessarily what the religion called for. And so the, the real issue before us is not what has happened historically. But what is happening now? And what is the basis of Islam? What is the basis of Christianity? Well, I'm not going to try to talk about Islam. There's plenty of people who are Muslims who will tell you that it is not a religion of peace, that what we saw here was not a misinterpretation of their theology, but an expression of it. Okay, but what I'm concerned about, what I want to talk about is the reaction of some of these pastors. And we've got a couple of pastors. Uh, Roger Jimenez of Verity Baptist Church said the killer succeeded in making Orlando safer. He said, are you sad 50 pedophiles are killed today? Uh, no, I think it's great, he said. I think that helps society. I think Orlando, Florida is a little safer tonight. And then we got Tempe, Arizona preacher Stephen Anderson, who said, well, there's at least 50 less pedophiles in the world. He said LGBT people should be executed well, properly, however, by a righteous righteous government. And Jimenez also said, I just wish the government would round them all up, put them up against a wall, Put a firing squad in front of them and blow their brains out. That's right. And so what we have to be concerned about, and that's the reason we have the First Amendment, we want a separation of religion from the state, okay? And I know that that's not in the Constitution. I know that wall of separation was something that Thomas Jefferson sent out as reassurances to people who had been told by John Adams that he was going to come around and steal their Bibles, so they are burying them in the backyard. He said, no, there's a wall that protects you from the government. That's the First Amendment. But we don't want a theocracy either. And what people have to understand is that Islam does want a theocracy. It is endemic to its religion. And now I'm starting to see some of these same uh, aspects in some of these Christians who are preaching, hey, we want the government to go out and round up uh, gays and kill them. And we saw this back in the fall as they were coming to the Iowa caucus. Remember, and this is something I didn't even see for a couple of months. We had this uh, meeting in Des Moines, Iowa. It was a National Religious Liberties Conference. Uh, it featured a lot of uh, presidential candidates. They had uh, Mike Huckabee, Bobby Jindal, and Ted Cruz. And of course, as after they dropped out, Ted Cruz was there. People played this clip, and I want to play this clip right now, what this guy said. 13 calls for the death penalty for homosexuals. Yes, Romans chapter 1, verse 32, the Apostle Paul does say that homosexuals are worthy of death. His words, not mine. 
And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let me say, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel is good news. What he is doing is he's taking us out of context, completely out of context. And when you take something out of context, Rob, you use it as a pretext for your prejudices. And that's what this man is doing. That is not Christianity. That is not the gospel. Mike Huckabee said he didn't know anything about that guy. Uh, Ted Cruz. And didn't, he interview, uh, didn't he introduce Ted Cruz right after that? That's right. He introduced Ted Cruz. And, and let me tell you, he's quoting the Bible, okay? And he's taking it out of context because what he says is, look, uh, just before that, where he says, God says that all these people deserve death, okay? What Paul is doing is he's laying this out. A lot of people understand this. They call it the Romans road. Paul says, look, we're all sinners. We all deserve death. And he goes out and he lays out this catalog of every possible thing you could do. And it's not just homosexuality. And yet these legalists will go in and they'll pull out homosexuality. They'll look at it and say, well, you know, gee, I do that. I'm a liar. I'm a, you know, I do this, this, this. I'm an adulterer. But, yeah, I steal but, money. I don't do homosexuality. Let's yeah. go after the homosexuals because it makes me feel like I'm justifying myself before God to attack this other group. And so he says, yeah, God knows that all these people who do this deserve death. But what did he say right before it? He said they've become filled with every kind of wickedness, with envy. Are we supposed to kill people who envy? With murder, with strife, with deceit, with malice. They gossip. They slander. They hate God. They're insolent, arrogant, boastful. They disobey their parents. Oh. So are we supposed to kill everybody on that list? My mom wants me to vote for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The whole point of this is, is, is Paul is laying down a pattern to tell people there's no such thing as a small sin. There are no peccadilloes. Every sin is cosmic rebellion to God. And so what he's saying is, he goes on later in, in the book, he says, the wage all, he says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And he says, the wages, what you deserve of sin are death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what's different about Christianity versus all the other man-made religions, okay? And these people are making Christianity into a man-made religion. The difference with Christianity is that God offers us free grace. And, it, there's, and he quotes another one. He quotes another one from 1 Corinthians. And again, here's another one where he puts out a long list of uh, sins. Fornicators, okay, adulterers. They, they're not calling for adulterers to be executed, okay? They do list homosexuals, sodomites. Thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were justified and forgiven because of what Christ did. So, yeah, would Christ be at the gay bar? Yeah. He came to save sinners. And so he would be there. He would be with the people. He would even be with the sinners at church, okay, because he came to save everybody. And he was the one who died. He doesn't call us to kill other people. He doesn't call us to create a government to do that. And I understand how it's difficult for a lot of Christians to hate the sin and not hate the sinner because some of the people, most of these sins, people don't have parades to talk about how they're adulterers, but they do have parades to talk about how they're homosexuals. And so when we talk about this, we're trying to tell people, look, God has got a better way for all of us. We've all got something that we're struggling with, okay? But when they do that and when they come in and force us and coerce us, now we start to get into the political realm. When they start to come to a baker or a photographer and say, you're going to come and perform at my wedding or a band. You're going to come and perform at my wedding or I'm going to shut you down as a business. That makes them very angry. And I have to say to them, Christians need to rise above that. Yes, we need to fight that kind of hatred. We need to fight it politically, but we don't need to use religion to do that. We don't need to pervert the gospel of Christ. That's not the good news. And we need to protect our kids as well from, and I'm not saying all gays are like that, but you do have pedophiles out there that we must protect our kids from. Yeah. Let's go to Scott in Illinois and get his reaction to that. He lists himself as a radical Christian. Scott, what's your take on what David Knight just had to say? Oh, uh, well, I'd just say amen to everything. Don't need to repeat it all. But uh, I, I, I told your uh, call screener that my friends consider me radical. I don't label myself as radical, but when my friends have problems, they come to me, tell me their problems. I listen and I pray and I ask for Jesus you know, to, uh, to help them or ask the Holy spirit to help them. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, thanks for taking my call. It's a real interesting topic. And uh, I just feel really, really sad that there are people that call themselves Christians, whether they're radical or not, that, that would say that it's the right thing to do, um, and go kill gay people. That is not, and where would Jesus be? Uh, the Jesus that I serve, he would be there at that nightclub, raising those people from the dead. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know where the chicken-hearted Christians were, 
that we're not down there ministering to these people after this slaughter. That's a good but, point. I, I mean, and my goodness, I mean, I know Billy, Billy Graham's still alive. Uh, I'd be, you know, this is a spiritual problem, and you just can't, if we took all the crooked bankers, and mm-hmm. took all the crooked lawyers, and took all the crooked judges, and took all the crooked police department, and took all the crooked military. We just took all the crooks and lined them up, like somebody said, and, and machine gunned them down. It wouldn't solve the problem because it's a spiritual problem. Satan is the cancer, and Jesus is the answer. It is not Buddha, Muhammad, or uh, Krishna, and I'm not opposed to having those people live in my neighborhood. What I am opposed to is giving them free passes and making them have special rights that, my goodness, if I went out and had a prayer meeting on Rush Street, which is in Chicago, uh, forty-five min- less than 40 minutes from my house, if I would uh, take political action and uh, try and close down that street, uh, you had some guy in the, on the, uh, your program the other day. You know, it's it's radic- It's political Islam that is our enemy. That's our spiritual enemy, <laughs> and they're trying to use political Islam is trying to use our our religious freedoms, our social freedoms. Um, you know, if you are a Christian, you can't harbor hate for people. You can harbor hate for sin. That's what my Bible says. You have to hate the sin and not the people. And Jesus wouldn't be down there. Uh, Scott, man, Scott, you're on a roll. Thanks for calling in. That was uh, that was great. And it's a, this is this is not a topic that's really it, it is cut and dry, but it's not cut and dry in the way you've been talking about it. You know, nobody's really talking about it from that angle. Well, you and, know, when I look at, at what Stephen Anderson said, he, he says uh, the bad news is that these homosexuals are still alive. They're going to be attacking Christians and they're going to be pushing gun control. Well, they're going to use what he said to push gun control. They're going to use what he said to, to attack Christians, Christians too. politically yeah. and to shut down our freedoms. This is something that, that made me very angry at the Libertarian Party. Jer- Gary Johnson got booed when he said, yes, you should be able to compel somebody who doesn't want to bake a cake for you or take your picture or play at your wedding. You should be able to compel them to do that. He was booed by libertarians not yeah, christians I, and i don't agree with that either that, i don't think you should crossing be crossing the line that's your right why would you want somebody rights. to bake your cake if they don't want to that's right would you want that I they're going to put a little extra baking soda and in they it. don't want it they just want to <laughs> punish people exactly we understand exactly we're gonna be back with a final segment it's rob doing david knight with the fourth hour of overdrive the alex jones show infowars.com forward slash show for the free streams tell all your friends about it right now it's All right, final segment of the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. Now, we've done a whole hour here for the fourth hour, and I haven't plugged it one time. So here it is right now, InfoWarsStore.com, 20% off all Alexa Pure water filtering systems. If you are not filtering your water right now, you're freaking crazy. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. If you, you look at all the areas that have lead in their water, the fluoride, the chlorine, even the chlorine they put in to clean it is toxic to your body. So you are freaking crazy if you're not getting an Alexa Pure or, or even a ProPure system. But our Alexa Pure systems right now, 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. And also right now, the Tim Kennedy special, 15% off Super Male Vitality. You heard our caller from Michigan plugging Super Male Vitality. Brain Force, which I plug and I take all the time. And Secret 12, that was what I brought to... Uh, Dresden gave me that extra boost of power to keep up with CIA uh, head uh, General Petraeus, former gave CIA head. Edge. Gave me the edge you to keep up with heavy him. Heavy equipment. I had a lot of gear. I had my uh, jacket shoved in there, and I was still able to keep up with him and get the question in, even though he was too scared to answer it. So, 15% off the Super Male Vitality Brain Force and Secret 12 special at InfoWarsLife.com. And uh, I got two callers left, Robert and James. Uh, hang on, I'm going to give you 30 seconds each. Uh, David, this last article, Professor rejects Marxism after traveling the globe. He Back in the days in the 60s, he was a big Marxist, you know, with uh, pr- uh, protesting the Vietnam War. He learned something from Bernie Sanders, didn't he? Exactly. Bernie after traveling Sanders 110 did. countries, he said it doesn't work. <laughs> I was disenchanted by, with Marxism after visiting the countries that had tried to shape their societies to conform to its doctor- doctrines. I was disillusioned by the realities. Right. Not, the, not the, oh, it'll be a great world with robots running us. No, the realities yeah. is that it doesn't work, people. That's right. Even if you think it will, even if they tell you, your college professor is telling you it's going to work, yeah. it's not going to work because you're going to run out of other people's money in the end, and that is the plain, hard truth, David Knight. utopian vision that doesn't exist. It is. And Bernie Sanders doesn't understand that, and unfortunately, there's a lot of his supporters who don't understand it. Yeah, but they'll find out. Yeah.
Uh, maybe if they get, they should move to one of these countries. James in Colorado, no fly list yet. Yeah, Thirty seconds, go. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, if you look at Obama's legislation, it says not only will the FBI be in charge of the list, but the Attorney General of the Justice Department as well. The whole thing started with Diane Feinstein a week after the Paris attack. She said, uh, "This national security conference, we have to have this." And then the day before they voted on it, you had San Bernardino. Uh, I don't know what to call that. I think there's a lot going on there, but. The point agree. is, the whole plan, CFR is involved, and all the rest of it. So. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And it's just another way to control us by, put, by not letting us travel. The watch list is the worst of Orwell and Kafka and the star chambers that were that exist. Exactly. Robert in Alabama on gun control. Go ahead, sir. Well, I, I got to start this out because I'm a, I'm a veteran, and um, I was in Iraq on a tour, and I want to tell you about radical Islam because uh, I, I lost some guys over there that went on a patrol, okay? They were killed. We went back later on, and there was a mosque. Um, and, we, and I asked my interpreter, I said, what are they talking about? And they were talking about we're a bunch of infidels and everything, and, and the mosque was showing me. He, he goes, they're preaching radical Islam. And my interpreter, which was an Iraqi at the time, literally told me, he says, that's radical Islam, you know? And uh, we just, went over We just there, can't get our president to say it. Out. Yeah. Oh, you, you went to the mosque? What's that? You went to the mosque? Well, yeah, we went over there we, with our gun trucks. No, nobody come up. They had a loudspeaker and everything else. And our interpreter um, said, yeah, they're, they're preaching radical Islam in there, that they want to kill infidels. It's radical Islam. And our, and our interpreter said that. Now, pissed off because our president does not want to use that terminology. He's afraid no, of no. it. He wants to use radical yeah. Islam against us, and it's a second generation. Right. It's even worse. Don't let the religion of peace get in the way of, right. uh, of truth. So there you go. That's been the fourth hour of Overdrive. I was your host, Rob Dew. Got David Knight, who sat in. Thanks to him. We put some interesting perspective on all this, uh, this Orlando massacre and where it's going to take us into the future. One thing is for certain, you better get armed and you better learn how to use your guns before they take them away. I'm signing off for InfoWars.com. Join us tonight at 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News.